Thank you, Gary. Swanee, Happy New Year to you. Yeah, we're sitting on a firecracker down here in the Louisiana Superdome. I mean, a war eagle all over the place and big orange everywhere, and it's going to be a fun game, I think, because it's two different philosophies. At least it was until they got together this spring and had a long visit. But nonetheless, I think, uh, Bob Greasy, this is going to be one of the exciting ball games of the entire bowl season and certainly a showcase for both, but especially Syracuse. It's been a Cinderella season for Syracuse. They've had an outstanding year. One of the reasons they've had an outstanding year is that they've been healthy. Every offensive starter has started every game except two, and they only missed one game each. Defensively, they only missed one man, and that was Ted Gregory. The other thing that they've done so well is they've played and they've won the ball games, but they have not gotten the respect that they feel that they should be. They hope to gain some respect on national television here today. For Auburn, Pat Dye may have more of a problem getting his team up. They beat Alabama in their season-ending big game, their big rivalry, and they won the SEC. So they may be a little bit complacent. Syracuse wants to win very badly. I can't believe an Auburn football team is complacent. <laughs> it's not possible. I can't either. They won't uh, let them we'll be. see. <laughs> I'll tell you somebody who's pumped up. 78-year-old, great name in the world of college football, a fine man, produced 20 All-Americans coaching at Syracuse, Ben Schwartzwalder, watching today down in Florida. Dick McPherson, well, he's looking ahead to what this game means for his future. February the 10th, then we'll know. What we try to get done this year is successful. We've had all the benefits of the season already. We've already been here, everything is beautiful. February the 10th, can we convince young people to join us to make us another level where we belong when Ben had the team? And I want to make sure we get that done while Ben's still around or enjoy it. So he's building on a long tradition that Coach Ben started back there going all the way back to 1949. Number four, Syracuse. Number six, Auburn coming up. Again, Gary. Keith, thank you very much. And uh, Happy New Year to you and Bob as well as... Uh, 1988 is going to be a very pleasant day, January 1st, for Clemson. The celebrating starting now, and uh, on the other hand, I'm sure Joe Paterno doesn't like to be in this position. Joe Paterno doesn't like to be in this position. He knows that he had a number of unfortunate injuries to his ball club. He has a very talented ball club returning, and the mistake that people who play Penn State next year would be if they underestimate this team because of the bad showing that they had here this afternoon. I imagine Keith Jennings is going to come up to you after the game, the Clemson receiver, and say, hey, number 88, you don't have anything on me. I know what this is all about, catching passes now. Well, he certainly does, and he showed himself to be an excellent receiver this afternoon and a very solid blocker. He's a young man I think we have to keep our eye on because he is going to be a dominating player. He's got the size, he's got the ability, and right now he certainly has to have the confidence that he can go up against any cornerback in the league. Well, on the preseason polls, you better put Clemson up there somewhere. They're going to be very, very tough, and you know Penn State will be back. Joe Paterno would have it no other way. Oh, absolutely. He's going to bring that team back, and, and he has confidence and faith in his young man. He's going to analyze what this team did today, work on them, come back, and be very solid in 1988. Lynn, enjoyed it. Thank you very much. For Lynn Swan and Steve Alvarez, I'm Gary Bender. The Florida Citrus Bowl has been brought to you by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. By Red Lobster, featuring seven new delicious seafood trios. And by Ocean Spray Pink Grapefruit Juice Cocktail. It's smoother, sweeter, not bitter. Want to thank our statistician, George Hill, our spotter, Kelly Hayes. The Florida Citrus Bowl was produced by Peter Lasser. Directed by Andy Sedaris. The technical director, Chet Mazurek. The associate director, Woody Fryman. Coming up next, it's the USF and G Sugar Bowl, featuring the undefeated and fourth-ranked Syracuse Orangemen and the sixth-ranked and SEC champion Auburn Tigers. And tomorrow on ABC Sports, the Professional Bowlers Tour gets rolling with the $125,000 ARC Alameda Open, plus the season premiere of ABC's Wide World of Sports, the Harlem Globetrotters in West Berlin, and the Athlete of the Year Award presentation. Promotional fee paid by the Florida Citrus Commission. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as a leader in sports television. It is the world's largest indoor stadium at ground level covering 13 acres. It is the Louisiana Superdome in New Orleans. It's been the site of many championship events, including NCAA basketball's Final Four, where last March, Keith Smart shot earned Indiana, the national championship over Syracuse, 73-72, home of the New Orleans Saints. 
NFL's biggest story this season, making the playoffs for the first time in their history this year, play the Minnesota Vikings here this Sunday. Owner Tom Benson has the whole town boogieing. New Orleans can be one of the great holiday playgrounds. Last night, despite rain, thousands gathered at Jackson Square to whoop in the new year. Orange is very much the color in New Orleans this year for Syracuse, of course. Burnt orange and navy blue for Auburn. And faithful partisans by the thousand. And we're ready to play the 54th US FNG Sugar Bowl game. ABC Sports presents College Football. Today in New Orleans, the champions of the Southeastern Conference, the Auburn Tigers, meet the Syracuse Orange men. Linebacker Andre Bruce, a principal in an Auburn defense that allowed only 12 touchdowns this season, but that defense will be challenged by a versatile Syracuse offense led by quarterback Don McPherson, the nation's most efficient quarterback. It is the first time these teams and coaches have met. Pat Dye of Auburn, Nick McPherson of Syracuse. The Orange men, fourth ranked, undefeated. The Tigers, number six in the nation. Today, in the USFNG Sugar Bowl on ABC Sports College Football. Ah, oh, we're indoors, and it's a good thing. The weather outside has been frightful over the last few hours with rain, and we should have ourselves a time on this New Year's Day from the Louisiana Superdome as the Syracuse Orange men and the Auburn Tigers get together for the first time in a college football game. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson, and may I wish all of you a very prosperous and happy new year. For you and your family, and for all of us, I guess, we could use a good, happy new year. And it's a great pleasure to see the Syracuse Orange men bouncing back and playing in a significant bowl game. Testimony to the kind of work that Coach Dick McPherson, his staff, and players have done to bring this team in undefeated against the SEC champion Auburn Tigers. It is interesting, too, I think, that members of the Syracuse coaching staff went down to Auburn during spring practice and studied the Auburn system under Pat Dye. And here they are, ready to jawbone each other on New Year's Day. Where will the game swing? Well, we put the question to the two coaches, and here are their comments. You know, I don't know if we can stop Syracuse or not. If we can stop them and control them a little bit with our defense, and I think the game may be decided between our offense and that defense. I think the big thing is, is they got a great defense. Last three SEC games, one touchdown against them. We can move the football. If we can't move the football against anybody, we're in trouble. The only thing that I can see that compares them is Penn State 86. Two great defenses. Pat Dye all, already says it's the best he's ever had. So that's a tremendous challenge. Can we... Can we run the opposite? Can we throw the drop back? Can we run the power game at him? It's going to be a lot of fun. If we can't, amen. Well, Bob Gracie, I think you've got a little different opinion on what may happen. Well, I think what Pat Dye said may be very true, but, uh, you know, this is an exciting game for me, and I think it's going to be an exciting game for our viewers. we got two of the top quarterbacks in the nation here today. First for Auburn, Jeff Berger, the Southeastern Conference Player of the Year. Now, the last four years, Auburn has led the SEC in rushing. This year, they're 10th in rushing, second in passing. Berger has got to lead this team if they hope to win. On the other side, you've got Donnie McPherson, consensus All-American, second in the Heisman Trophy balloting, the nation's number one passer. He's got to lead. He is the offense for Syracuse, and he has to play well, but he's got a problem. He's going up against an outstanding defense, University of Auburn. Take a look at the statistics and what Auburn has done in the SEC this year. They're first against the rush, first in scoring, Quarterback sacks and interceptions, they lead. They're second in pass defense and total defense. This should be an outstanding game. And who better to have Syracuse going against that tough defense than Donnie McPherson, the consensus All-American quarterback. But there is a big, big worry on the part of Dick McPherson. His big guy in the middle of his defensive front, Ted Gregory, is coming off arthroscopy, and uh, he may not be that efficient. You know, and they talk about uh, uh, 
Gregory as though if he doesn't play, their whole defense is entirely different. I've never heard anybody talk about one player, a nose guard, with as much regard and much respect as they do Gregory. Of course, a nose guard, if he plays well, can stop the run. And if, if Auburn has any desire to try and run today, Gregory needs to play well. We're going to check him out early in the ballgame. Auburn offers two outstanding linebackers, Kurt Crane in the middle. The man never seems to make a mistake. Yeah. But they've got this big guy outside, Andre Bruce, and he, you know he's going to be looping and hunting all day. He is an impact player. They have talked about him in the same breath as Lawrence Taylor. He is, certainly can make some big plays. He's a huge man. We'll keep an eye on him today, too. Well, the roar is starting to swell in the background as the white-shirted visiting Syracuse Orange men now are about to make their entry into the Louisiana Superdome and the 54th USFNG Sugar Bowl game and there's a whole lot of folks down here from Syracuse. So they're going to wait and bring one out one in and Auburn's over at the other end as the Auburn band moves into place and here the orange. 11 and 0 Dick McPherson seven seasons 41 36 and one voted coach of the year by the Walter Camp Foundation. He's a good Scotsman from Old Town Maine and he is a delight. SEC championship, 9-1-1, one, one. seventh season at Auburn, 61-21-1. Dick McPherson waited a long time to be a head coach, and he's got the job he wants, and he's done a heck of a job with it, and he is not concerned about anything but how much fun he's having. Auburn's been here forever. They can't be enjoying this as much as we are. They just can't be nor can it mean as much to them. They're only playing a little team from out of the East. We're dying for them. So turn the wheels and turn up the banjo and everybody get on your dancing shoes because we've got a dandy ready today at the Louisiana Superdome. The USF&G Sugar Bowl, an ABC sports exclusive brought to you by USF&G, all across this country, USF&G protects your business, home, auto, and life. USF&G covers the USA. By 3M, worldwide sponsor of the 1988 Olympic Games, 3M, supporting the dream. By the U.S. Armed Forces, it's a great place to start. And by the new Jeep Eagle Division of Chrysler Corporation, you can expect the best. The two teams are on the field and about ready to go. A moment with Mike Adamley. Well, Keith, everybody talks about Syracuse's great tradition of running backs, Jim Brown, Ernie Davis, Floyd Little. Auburn's got a pretty fair tradition himself, and perhaps the greatest running back Auburn's ever produced, their 1985 Heisman Trophy winner, Bo Jackson. Bo, well, you seem to be as excited about this game as the players do. Well, I'm here for one reason, and that's to get Auburn fired up to go out to try to beat these guys this afternoon. I know you're under the microscope, your professional athletic career, but you seem to come back here to Auburn and come back to be with your team and be just one of the guys. Well, Auburn is where Bo Jackson was discovered, and you can never forget where you come from. Okay, good luck today. Happy New Year. Thank you, and a happy New Year. Keep them going. All right, keep. And our boy, Bo, don't ever forget. Chris Johnson will kick it off for the blue-shirted Tigers. And we're ready to go. Syracuse receiving. They want the toss. They want the ball. It takes a funny little bounce, and finally it's picked up by one of the big up men. And the Orange will possess the ball up around their 24-yard line. Kelly, Stoffel, Flannery, Garrett, Bednarz, and Sims, the big people up front for the Orange. Kane wide, Glover wide. Don McPherson, the quarterback, multi-talented fellow. Johnson and Drummond, the running backs. And here comes your first snap of the ball game. Keep your eye on 82. He's a dandy. He can fly. So can that tight end, Pat Kelly. 
big target, and they're going to throw on the first down. And the shot down the field, out of bounds. First down up at the 41, Deval Glover making the catch of Junior from Troy, New York. The defense for Auburn, Stallworth, Roland Hill, Bruce Phillips, Crane, and Ogletree, three linebackers, outstanding. Bruce uh, plays uh, outside, very good one. Reed, Staples, Cheatham, and Briggs, and look out for some pressure on young Perry Reed, who is a freshman, replacing Kevin Porter, their all-conference performer, who is off the team because of contact with an agent. It is first down for Syracuse, and they send Glover in motion. And McPherson going to stay in the air, goes down the middle, intended that time for the tight end Kelly, and he was tipped at the line of scrimmage. These people up front for the Auburn defense, Stallworth stands 6'5", Benji Rowland is 6'4", Nate Hill is 6'5", and when they get up in the air and raise those arms, uh, you've got to put some uh, loft on the ball. And it's a very aggressive front uh, five, uh, the three down linemen, the two outside linebackers. Offensive coordinator for Syracuse, George DeLeon, was saying, we'd love to play seven on seven, take away those front four, and we'd love to throw against them. He feels the strength is in the D Auburn defensive line. It is second down and 10 for Syracuse. Option down the line. McPherson gets around the corner. There is the penalty flag in his weight. He gets a big gain out of it down inside the Auburn 40. Run down by Andre Bruce. But let's see about the penalty flag. The referee is John McClinic. All the officials are out of the Big 8 conference. Offside, Auburn. They'll turn it down, and it'll be first down Syracuse. J.C. Leimbach, the umpire. Butch Clark, the field judge. Tom Ehlers, the linesman. Mike Borgard, the side judge. Ken Hout, the line judge. Artie Falk is the back judge. As I said, from the Big 8. Dick McPherson is uh, explaining to one of the officials that one of his players was uh, un uh, unduly thrown to the ground or battered on the head. McPherson, very, uh, very outspoken, very uh, well regarded by his players and very well respected. Well, just inside the 40 of Auburn, first down for the Orange. McPherson rides it off to the fullback, and he runs into a stack of humanity wearing blue, anchored by big Nate Hill, the senior from LaGrange, Georgia. Big Nate, 6'5", 266, 6'4", 270, and 6'5", 260 across that defensive front. The linebackers are all pretty good size, too. Ogletree, 6'3", Crane, 6'2", Phillips, 6'2", and Bruce, 6'6". Six, six. So they're tall. It is second down, about nine. They had Kelly in motion going back inside. McPherson caught and dropped back behind the 45 by Ron Stolworth. Remember, Tracy Rocker, an All-American defensive tackle, tore up a knee and is out uh, for the rest of the season. But Stolworth and his colleagues have stepped to the fore in the absence of Tracy Rocker. And young David Rocker, only a freshman, Still growing at 6'4 and 260 has stepped in to play well too. Uh, Keith, if there's a weakness for the Syracuse offense, it was in their offensive line early in the year. They've got two redshirt freshmen and one sophomore in the offensive line. Auburn wants to pressure McPherson if they can. It is third down and 17. The ball back near the 47. Short drop by McPherson, runs a quarterback draw, and he is nailed down at the 42-yard line. He got away from Robert Goff, a down lineman who had stepped in at nose guard. And so now it is fourth down. And Cooper Gardner, he was a starting safety. Gardner was a year ago, but he kept getting concussions. And he has been doing the putting this year. On 43 kicks, he is average better than 37 yards per punt. And Freddie Wagand is deep. Wagand, uh, a speedster wide receiver normally handles the ball very surely he will call a fair catch and make the catch out at the 13 yard line so the Auburn Tigers don't have very good field position for their opening possession but they'll take it and we'll see what happens in a moment now the Auburn offense for you as the Tigers come up on the ball for their first snap of this game at Jeff Berger at quarterback Better than 2,000 yards throwing the ball this season, and it's no longer a gimme that Auburn's going to run the football in this end of the field. 
but they do. And on the first carry, it's Stacy Danley. And Danley, a freshman, red shirt out of Winston, Georgia, 205 pounds, spins out of there and picks up pretty good yardage. Reeves, Floyd, Dunn, Hudson, Garner, Searles up front for the Tigers with uh, Tillman, Lawyer Tillman, 6'4", fine athlete, one of the wide receivers, Duke Donaldson, who is a speed burner, also outside, with Ware and Danley lined up behind Berger. Pick up on the play of about six yards. It is second down and four for Auburn. Egyptian Danley gets his cut, gets his block, gets the first down up at the 29-yard line. Defensively for Syracuse, along the defensive front, Paul Fraze, 265-65. Ted Greger is starting, so leg and all. He's a gamer, 6'1", 260. Rob Burnett, 255, the other tackle. The backers, uh, you saw there, and the defensive secondary, Ingram, Mangrum, Paul, and Holmes. And Marcus Paul, outstanding in the defensive secondary for Syracuse. He's out of Florida. He can run. Back goes Berger on first down. Throws underneath, but the pass is incomplete. He threw the ball to his man right in front of the backer who dropped off, and Danley couldn't make the catch. Let's go in and take a look at Ted Gregory, the All-American, number 93 in orange, right in the middle of your screen, being blocked one-on-one -on -one by the center. Now he gets a little help from the left guard. Expect to see that all day, but no apparent signs that that leg is giving him any problems. We'll see what happens when he gets a little tired, because I don't care what they say, it hurts when you had a scope job done on a knee. Scott Bolton is in the lineup now for Auburn, and Burgess whips his pass over there. It's caught by Duke Donaldson, and Duke's decked up around the 33-yard line, well short of the first down. That dive facing the sideline. He's developed a program at Auburn that has depth to sustain. He's got an all-star team hurt on the sideline. There's no question. You mentioned depth. He will, he will run in uh, offensive and defensive players in early in the ball game. He says our games are won in the fourth quarter. He uses players he takes out as All-Americans. His All-Americans only play two-thirds of the ball game. It is third and seven for the Tigers, and they run it up the middle. And a little delay, and Danley can't shake it. And it's going to bring up fourth down, and the Tigers will have to punt it away. So Syracuse moved it some on their first possession. Auburn moved it some on their first possession. Now the punt from Brian Schulman, averaging better than 40 yards per kick, spins it out of there. It's a good kick. Connie Kane takes it and can't break it as he is swarmed back around the 28-yard line. That's a 40-yard punt, three-yard return, with 10 minutes and 13 seconds to go in the first quarter of the USFNG Sugar Bowl. Syracuse, second possession of the ball game. Number 95, David Rocker, young man I mentioned a moment ago, true freshman, 6'4", 260. And very quickly, Pat Nye is putting in fresh people. If you don't see the unexpected in the first possession, you're almost certain to see it in the second. So let's see what Syracuse, if they've got something else in mind. McPherson was the dominant figure in the opening possession. And he hands it off this time to his tailback, Robert Drummond. And Drummond out of the eye formation. Pounds in there for about three yards. Keith, Syracuse's offense is, is noted for a big play offense. Yesterday, in talking with the uh, defensive coaches, Wayne Hall, the coordinator for Auburn, he says the key thing we want to do is take away the big play. This year, Syracuse, on their first possession in 11 games, scored on seven of them. They didn't score here today, but they're playing a very tough defense. Kane comes wide to the bottom of the picture. And they bring Glover in motion toward Kane. That gives them double wide, bottom of the screen, and they pitch it back to Drummond. Drummond can't get the block to turn the corner, and he's knocked out of bounds up around the 36. They've got to go past the 38 to pick up the first down. The strong safety, Greg Staples, got the tackle for Auburn. One of the things that makes this offense for Syracuse so tough is the ability of 
McPherson. Not only is he a drop-back passer, it could play for a lot of colleges in the country that play drop-back passing. He could also play for Oklahoma, who uses an option type of game. He's a great option player and also a drop-back passer. Third and about three. This has got run all over it. And he's got his first down. Nothing fancy. Once that quarterback gets out and turns up like that, it just simply becomes old single wing football, does power football. Well, it was an option, run or pass, and that is the, the, the way McPherson looked at it. Run first and pass second. He had a couple receivers down, but he said, if I can make three yards and a first down, I'm going to run it. He's gained 22 yards and four rushes. The ball is at the Syracuse 41, first down for the Orange men. Rocker is out. Benji Rowland back in. The defense in front for Auburn. Straight back, McPherson. Get some heat. Down he goes. All the way back at the 27. Robert Goff and Ron Stolwer for the Tigers. Let's go back and take a look why the sack occurred. This receiver is going to hook here. The tight end is going to be here. They're both going to be covered. Watch the two receivers. He drops back and looks this side. Now, if you hold it just about here, hold it. You see the man here and the man right here, both covered. That's what we call a coverage sack. And it brings up second and long. The ball all the way back at the 27. They've got to go to the Auburn 49. They need 19 yards on the hand it off. Keep it on the ground. Don't get too fancy back here where you might lose the ball. Darrell Johnson, the fullback, a junior from Youngstown, New York, is wrapped up by Edward Phillips and Quentin Riggin. And it'll be fourth down for Syracuse. Well, it'll be third down. Syracuse. Third down, yeah, third and a third and a long way to go. It looks like it might be fourth. This is an area that uh, Syracuse has used a quick kick in the past. Uh, Keith, I don't know if they're going to use it here, but back up in their own area, third and long, but they don't want to turn it over. Good place to do it. They it? might try. Johnson would do it. Here it comes. You called it. He doesn't get a good one. He sort of hit it straight up, but gets a good bounce out of it. And now it's going to roll inside the Auburn 35 and down to the 33, the 32, and they'll take every hit <laughs> and put it down near the 31. Bobby Dodd used the quick kick. General Nalen used the quick kick. Tommy Prothro used. All these people have used it over the years as an offensive weapon, and Dick McPherson has it very prominent in his repertoire, and though Johnson didn't get his uh, foot all on the ball, he got enough of the roll. Normally, a fullback has averaged over 55 yards this year on three kicks. Now it is the second possession for the Auburn Tigers. Pat Thay there in the striped shirt. Pat Sullivan is the man that handles the play calling. He's almost been the personal tutor in the development of Jeff Berger at quarterback in the Auburn passing game. Berger stands up, whips it out to the side, caught by Duke Donaldson. Donaldson lets it go downfield. Lawyer Tillman's got it! Inside the 10. Marcus Paul saved the touchdown. Tillman's just going to go straight down as the quick screen pulls the corner up. Paul, number 10, doesn't get back in time as Tillman, the big play man for this Auburn offense, makes a big play early in the ballgame. So the big junior travels 58 yards on the play, and it's first down. Auburn at the Syracuse 10. I told you that second possession was, had some firecrackers in well, it. Everybody almost. loosens up, as you well know. Yeah. All right. Berger pitches it to Danley. Going to run the reverse. Coming around with it. That's Freddie Wagan. And not much working on that, baby. They lost two. So the Orange play it well. Well, we get a flea flicker on the first play of this possession and a reverse on the second play. You know, I think Auburn's offense is known as a ball control conservative offense. And it is. But the catches like that last one by Lawyer Tillman makes everybody think, hey, this is a big play offense. Tillman can make the big play, but the predominant offense is the 
conservative ball control. Yeah, but that's time. totally out of character with the history of Pat Dye. It's He's a, a north-south man around that 10-yard line. Yeah, that's true. It's a, it's a bowl game, though, and they don't have anything to go from here. They'll run it this time. Bangley cuts it back into the middle, and he was within one arm of going into the end zone. It was Rob Burnett that tripped him up. Take a look at it from the side. Eye formation, straight blocking. Finds a little crease in the defensive line. Makes a nice gain to about the six-yard line. There's a penalty flag across the way on the opposite side of the field, and that's why the discussion amongst the officials. We got another flag just thrown right now. We had illegal procedure on the offense. Too many men in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Well, he said too many men in the backfield. I think he was looking at it from the uh, from the other's perspective. That means not enough men on the line. You can have as you can have uh, you can have one or two or, or three in the backfield as long as you have seven or six on the offensive line. So the five yards will bring Auburn back to their 17. You don't think Coach Mack's not in the game? He wants a time. He wants a timeout. There's something wrong. He wants a timeout. I think he wants to talk to the officials a little bit more about it. He says, come here. He's now called Derek Ward to the sideline. He's entitled to conference, but if he takes a conference, uh, it can cost him a timeout, but he's already spent his timeout. Now, if he has a conversation here with John McClinic, and I'll tell you right now, this is one of the better officials you'll see work, and he's going to grant him the courtesy of the conversation. It has to do with interpretation of rule, then uh, that's where the additional timeout could be charged. John McClinic, incidentally, told me last night this is his last game. He's going to retire. Looked like he was saying something about 15 yards. Now, he said too many men in the backfield. You have to have seven men on the line of scrimmage. You can have eight or nine or ten, but you have to have seven. I've never heard an official say too many men in the backfield. I'm sure he meant not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Now, <laughs> I don't know what they're discussing over here. Maybe well, maybe he wanted to decline the penalty. I don't know why he would, but uh, still he might have. I don't. That's a five-yard penalty, not a 15. That's right. Well, he had his piece, and I'm sure he feels much better about it. <laughs> Mac was a, a outstanding uh, coach. He coached in the pros for a while, coached for the Cleveland Browns and the Denver Broncos, and doing an outstanding job at uh, Syracuse. All right, his second down and goal. The ball is back at the 17. The series started right on the 10. Burgers pass goes into the corner. Tillman! Touchdown! Lawyer Tillman is 6'4 and a great leaper. Right here, he's just going to go down and break to the corner. Now, there's no one out here. When he sees that immediately, he's thinking, I got some good things that are going to go on. He's going to release to the outside. The outside man just holds his defensive back. A nice throw high into the outside and a good throw by Berger. Win Lyle, sophomore from Auburn, stayed home to play and throws it through. So with five minutes and 47 seconds to play in the first quarter, the Tigers go to the lead. Berger, I mean, uh, Tillman, number 85, in the center of your screen, is going to release around. Now he holds the safety who's going to come into your picture just about now. Ten is Paul, who leads the team in interceptions and just could not get there because the ball was thrown perfectly. And as you mentioned, Tillman with his 6'4 high made the catch. There will be people who will argue forever that Jim Brown was football's greatest running back, and as long as there is history film, they'll have a case, both at Syracuse and later with the Cleveland Browns. Brown's senior year, Syracuse went to the Cotton Bowl. Remember that Jim Brown only played eight regular season games in college. Let's go back and take a look at the protection, and Berger, number 93, is Gregory. See three men there blocking him as responsible. Berger 
Gets the ball off high and quickly. This is not a pass that takes a long time to throw. You're down near the end zone. And an outstanding catch. Jeff Berger, who's got to feel like in his senior year, he's had a black cat walking under ladders and a cloud following him because he's had his share of troubles. But I'll tell you one thing, you beat him, you're going to come out of there with skin knuckles because he is a tough kid from Cedartown, Georgia. He's had the, been a lot of distractions for this Auburn team this year, but they've hung together. Uh, kicks off now to Michael Owens. Owens back inside the five, gets some daylight out to the 20-21. Tomorrow on ABC Sports, the return of the Professional Bowlers Tour. The first stop, $125,000 ARC Alameda Open. Then we'll have the season premiere of ABC's Wide World of Sports, the Harlem Globetrotters from Berlin, West Germany. And the Athlete of the Year Award presentation. All of it begins at 3 Eastern and Pacific, 2 Central tomorrow on ABC Sports. All right, 7-0. The Auburn Tigers and the Syracuse Orange pin now with their third possession in the first quarter. The ball is just outside the 20. They send Kelly in motion. And McPherson rides it down the line and will lose at least three as Quentin Rickens, a sophomore linebacker from Montgomery, number 41, got him. Clemson rolled over Penn State 35-10 in the Florida Citrus Bowl. Fourth quarter, Nebraska leads Florida State 28-24. Cotton Bowl, Texas A&M 25-10, third quarter over Notre Dame. Looks like Jackie Sherrill's Aggies are romping. Second down for Syracuse, 13. McPherson option, goes outside with it. Ball rolling around on the ground, diving for it, Drummond. And I think Robert saved it. There were two Tigers pinching McPherson. And they almost lost the ball. Well, that Riggins was right in there. He is really quick. So was 96 Roland. Take a look right here. Roland is going to get around and force as he comes down to make the pitch. Roland 96 at defensive tackle this time. It's around the block, a poor block, forces him to pitch it quickly. A poor throw, and they're doing a nice job of forcing that option. Now they're all the way back on the 12, and here's a quick kick. And this time he doesn't get the big bounce. It bounces back upfield and will be just across midfield on the Syracuse side. So Johnson got it away, but with the bounce coming back toward him, he was only able to total 38 yards. Take a look at Johnson. He's lined up deep in the tailback. He's normally the fullback. When they switch and go like that, you can be alerted. It might be a quick kick. They always use it when they're backed up inside their 30-yard line. Of course, they don't do that only when they're going to quick kick. There are some occasions in the ball game where Johnson and the tailback do switch. But when you're backed up like that and it's third and long, you can look for a quick kick. And you don't want the spiral on that kind of a kick either. You want that end over end, that driver, so it'll bounce. Exactly. That time it did. Berger drops the pass on first down, gets some heat, runs away from it. Now he's got a problem. And Jeff will lose back to the 46. A very good pursuit by Paul Graves, a senior from Barrington, New Hampshire. And a good call, Keith, offensively. You've got Syracuse down a little bit. Their offense is sputtering the last few. You've got good field position almost at the 50-yard line. First down's a great time to throw. Just nobody was open. Ball is marked back inside the 47, just outside the 46 of Auburn. And it's second down and 14. Berger, a little quick pop, throws it out to the side. That goes to Wigand. But he shakes one, and he's out of bounds. Just at the 46 of Syracuse. So a fair gain on the play. It'll bring up third down, and here's Mike Adamley. Well, Keith, that play right before the lawyer Tillman touchdown reception, you might wonder why Dick McPherson was arguing so vociferously. His contention was not only did Auburn have too many men in the backfield, but too many men on the field, period. 12 men on the field instead of, an, instead of a five-yard, or in addition to the five-yard penalty, it should have been also loss of down. So that's why he was hooting and hollering. Well, he got their attention. 
from the 46. It is third down and a short seven. Burgers pass kicked off. The Auburn receiver never looked back. There was, I don't think either one of the two receivers were ready to make an effort at the ball, and Berger is picked off by David Holm, the right quarterback, a junior from Burlington, New Jersey. Neither man was really available, but I think the receivers could have at least kept the ball from being intercepted. Well, what happens on a case like this, Keith, is there's supposed to be an adjustment ran. Berger thought he was going to run a different route. The receiver just kept going straight up field. He was throwing for a spot. He expected the receiver to be in that spot. The receiver ran a different route. Watch him. He goes straight up the field. That's 24 Bolton. He goes straight up. The ball is thrown in. He expected him to square in and catch that football. And so Syracuse makes a break now. First down at their own 42. Auburn leading 7-0 in the first quarter. The fullback, Johnson, Darrell Johnson, just keeps on pounding, and he picks up about six on that carry. Michael Owens is in the backfield now. He's number 44, a sophomore from uh, Carlisle, Pennsylvania. To look at the quarterback comparison so far, Berger getting the best of it. McPherson's been sacked a couple of times. Tried to run the option, and that has not been there either. That's why Johnston up the middle. At this point, he needs to run that a few more times to hold him inside. 49 second down and three and they take it right up the middle and pick up the first down near the Auburn 46 yard line and it's Johnson carrying again when the big down people are committing themselves and uh, flying in it's, they're easier to block nudge them out of the way and let the football back down so all the big plays are made for Syracuse when McPherson gets outside, either keeps it or pitches it back. They're not going to get hurt with big plays by forcing Johnston, the fullback, to run inside. First down, Orange. McPherson pass. coming down the line, now sets the pass, shoots it deep. Nobody there. Nobody there. Running deep under the ball was Rob Moore. Tommy Kane, number 82, the wideout from Montreal, Quebec, turned back inside looking for the ball. and. By the time he'd done that, school was out. McPherson had to let it go. You know, Kane has caught 14 touchdown passes this year. In fact, leads the NCAA in that category. One of the reasons he's caught so many touchdown passes is because of the option, as you saw right there. Their defense is concerned about the option. McPherson comes down, fakes the option, drops back, and hits Kane, who's averaging 22 yards for big plays at that time. McPherson still got it, gets around the corner, turns it, first down, still going inside the 30, down to the Auburn 27. Take a look at the line play offensively for Syracuse. 79 is Bettsnard, gets a nice block outside. Johnston, 32, pushes his man, the linebacker Crane out. And the quarterback, McPherson, who led this team in rushing the last two years, was fourth this year, picks up 25 yards. Kurt Crane overran that play just a bit, helping Johnson's effort to keep him off the quarterback. Won't see him do that often. They'll try to run up the middle again, and Johnson has stood up at the 25. Johnson is a big, tough kid, a fullback. Reminds me of a little bit of another guy that played fullback for Syracuse a few years back, named Larry Zonka. In fact, I was at the, one of their breakfast meetings yesterday, and Johnston came over, and we were chatting a little bit. He was wondering about Zonka. And to know if all those stories that Zonka is telling me is uh, telling everybody about me are true. Evidently, Zonka spoke to the Syracuse football banquet after the regular season was over with. Drunk's telling stories on you. Yeah, and none of them are true. <laughs> <laughs> Back there's an option down the line. Looks to the corner, run down by number 96, Benji Rowland. Oh, Benji's active in the middle there. A lot of sophomores, juniors, and freshmen on this Auburn football team. Reggie Slack figures the heir apparent at quarterback when Berger leaves. They'll get Tracy Rocker back next year as well. It looks like a pretty good football they team. Are, next they season. are big and strong, and as McPherson said, and besides that, they're quick. 
Third down and three. That person rolls out, option on the play, got enough room to get his first down, and takes it to the 15-yard line before Kurt Crane gets it. They're going to give him the 14-yard line. Here's the All-American, number 39, Crane. He flows with the quarterback. When the quarterback rolls out, everybody is covered. McPherson has a little bit more speed than Crane. Picks up the yardage for the first bat, first down. But Crane is a walk-on. The transfer from Memphis State who has come on and really is the leader of that defense. McPherson has run nine times for 36 yards. Hand the ball off to number 32. That's Johnson. Johnson running out of the eye back position that time. And he'll pick up a yard or so. Time gone. The first quarter of play. So after one in the 54th USFNG Sugar Bowl, it's Auburn 7 and Syracuse threatening. And he's the 11th of 12 children, six brothers, six sisters. Two of his brothers, as you see right there, are priests, one in St. Louis, one in the state of Maine. And, and someone asked Dick McPherson, he says, did you ever want to be a priest? He says, no. He says, but I do attend Mass most every morning. But he says, don't canonize me. He says, my church is for sinners, not saints. Well, a little divine help from within the family ranks can't hurt you. It is second down. Now the ball at the 12, second and eight for Syracuse. The Orange men's first real threat of the ball game. That person has been the main man as he has been all season. He's got the ball. Stand up. Quick pop into the end zone. Penalty flag. They call touchdown. Probably interference on the play. And I think the TD will stand. They burned Perry Reed on that play who is replacing Kevin Porter and it was Glover who did it. We have defensive pass interference. Touchdown Syracuse. The touchdown is good and the penalty would be assessed on the kickoff. Tim Bessling now will try to tie the ball game. The holder is Todd Philcox. The snapper is Brian Featheroff. has never missed an extra point in his college career. 72 of 72 now, and we're all even the USF and G Sugar Bowl. Go back and take a look why this works. Here's Glover. He's going to run a slant. Now, when the option starts this way and McPherson comes, the safety who is right in the way comes up. McPherson will step back and throw the ball right where the safety was for the touchdown. This is what an option will do. Forces the backs up. He says, if you're coming up, there's a nice hole there and a nice throw and a big touchdown. That wasn't a bad catch by Glover under some duress. A very nice catch. Nice throw, nice catch. You know, Syracuse being behind, nothing new for them. They were behind three times this year. In fact, the last two games they were behind and came back to win both of them. Yeah, that West Virginia finale of the season was a un last second thing. Unbelievable. Take a look at the time of possession. Syracuse on the left controlling it for more than 10 minutes. Auburn had helped to be able to one, be the team that controlled the football. Well, now the Tigers know they're in a football game, don't they? I think they knew that Syracuse was going to come back. This is going to be an exciting game. You know, I ask, let's, let's take a look at this again from the line side. Good protection up front, which is always key. Offensive line doesn't get credited for very much, but you talk to the quarterbacks, look at an outstanding catch. And there you said, Keith, Perry Reed, who is subbing for Kevin Porter, was the man who they were working on. He's just a freshman. He hasn't yeah. had a whole lot of time at that position. You I guess, Bob, that may be one of the toughest spots if you're going to have to go out and, and play fresh. 
and cornerback's got to be about the toughest place you can go. I mean, you can hide a defensive linebacker or a defensive lineman, but, but you're out on the corner one-on-one, -on -one, you can control the outcome of a football game. Harry Mose is the man in the middle now for Besslings kickoff. Harry is another freshman out of Lake Wales, Florida, 200-pounder, and he's eat moving. James Joseph, their starting tailback, out with a knee injury. He'll be back next year. So they're deep at running back. Mose at the goal line. Good coverage by Syracuse, and they've stopped him just short of the 15-yard line. Next Saturday night, ABC Sports presents a primetime special, the U.S. Figure Skating Championship, America's finest women, including defending U.S. ladies champion Jill Greenery, Debbie Thomas, and Karen Cadavis for off. It'll be live except on the West Coast, 8 Eastern and Pacific, 7 Central, next Saturday night on ABC Sports. Ball is just inside the 15 for Auburn. Their first possession of the ball game, they took it at their 13. 7-7 seven, seven ball game, second quarter. Danley. Trying to wait for his blocks to develop. They didn't. And he moves it out just to the 16, close to the set, maybe over the 16. Just a toss sweep. This is one of the plays that Syracuse wanted to find out about when they went down in the spring to see the Auburn program. The toss sweep and how they practice to be so physical out there on the football field. David Holmes, the corner number 38. You saw him come up to the outside and turn that play back in. So he was the key man. Nothing there. That was Reggie Ware, number 36. That time, Ted Gregory, the nose guard, just stood him up and stopped him. Here's why everybody was talking about Gregory, 93. The center can't control him. Here, they block him one-on-one, -on -one, and you can't do that. Penn State tried to block him one-on-one, -on -one, and he had a field day. He made like 16 or 17 tackles. You have to have two men on him to start with till one of them can control him. It'll be third down in about eight for Auburn. He's lean and nasty, I am told, especially when he was hurt, Keith. Nobody likes to be hurt and not play in the ball game, but he was even nastier when he wasn't in there. <laughs> Berger swings it out. Danley. Danley dives for the marker, and he's going to have a first down unless the penalty is against Auburn. There's a flag on the field. Against Auburn. Wipes out the first down. Matt Dye has gone more to a passing game this year because of necessity. He really doesn't have those outstanding running backs that he's had here in the past. Guys like Brent Fullwood, Bo Jackson, Lionel James, James Brooks, William Andrews, Joe Cribbs. On the offense, it'll still be third down. Let's watch the right side and see if we can see a hold. Right there, yep, the yep. left guard, the right guard with his left hand out. That's Garner, number 76, scoring two points on a takedown. With Pat Dye going more to the passing game out of necessity. All back inside the nine, third down and 17. On that little delay to Stanley, Syracuse forms it. Now, Auburn will punt out of the end zone. And pressure's on Brian Schulman, the junior from Brentwood, Tennessee. Let's see if Syracuse goes after it here. Nope, doesn't look like it. Tommy Kane is standing back across midfield. First punt today by Brian Schulman was a 40-yarder. There's no pressure. It's a low kick, though. It may give Kane some room. Takes it at the 45. Changes his direction. Now gets a block, and what a block! And comes back across midfield. And number 10, Marcus Paul, threw a spectacular block that freed Kane for a 13-yard return after a 47-yard punt. Watch number 41 for Auburn. He's the man that's going to be blocked. And Marcus Paul, number 10, right? Right here is going to just deck him. And whenever that happens, the man starts one way, comes back. 
you can normally look for some of those wipeout blocks. Syracuse with the ball at the Auburn 42. You've got 12-19 to go in the first half, and the Syracuse Orange men are camped on the Auburn 42-yard line, first down in a 7-7 ball game. Michael Downs, oh, uh, Michael uh, Owens is the uh, high back. That's Kelly, the tight end in motion. Good receiver, hasn't seen the ball yet today. Hand the ball to 44 Owens. And he's inside the 40 to the 39, a pickup of three on the play, and the tackle to Quentin Riggin. Syracuse tailbacks together, there are three of them, Drummond, Owens, and Abraham gained over 1,400 yards from that spot this year. Second and seven. Glover in motion, the man that caught the touchdown. A little pop downfield to Glover. He's got it in the secondary and takes it to the Auburn 20 yard line. First down, Syracuse. Take a look at what the option does here again. Here's the receiver. He's just going to go right in here and hang. If the option, when he comes down, is going to pull these linebackers up. He's going to hit him right behind the linebackers. You hang in the seam. He fakes the, the handoff, pops his receiver, and lets him run. Tough offense for defense. Robert Drummond is back in at I back, replacing Owen. Has the ball. Oh, he had a hole, and he was about to take off. Number 78 trying to pin a block on Ogletree, but Ogletree got just enough of him to knock him down. Right side of your screen, pulling to the left. That's Stoffel right there with a good block. Allows him to get up inside. Well, just inside the Auburn 19 now. Back at the long eight with Owens back at Ibach. McPherson gets pressure, throws the ball incomplete. So he had pressure in front, and he could hear the hooves coming from the back, and he missed his target. Third and eight. McPherson doesn't call the plays. He lets his offensive coordinator, George DeLeon, call it, but he knows what's going on, knows the plays that are being called. Double wide now, top of the picture for Syracuse. Pressure. McPherson, down he goes on the 30. There's a penalty flag. So while they're marking the penalty, let's join Mike Adam Lee as he visits with one of my favorite people, Archie Manning. Back in 1970, uh, Old Miss beat Arkansas in the Sugar Bowl back then, and this is the man who engineered that victory. There's something special about this bowl game. This is my first Sugar, and it is great. Well, it is. It's a great bowl game. We've got two great teams playing today. I think we'll have a great game, Mike. And on Sunday, the New Orleans Saints, and talking to some of the players yesterday, they kind of wish you were back to enjoy their first uh, winning season ever. Well, it's been enjoyable just watching it. Uh, Jim Moore's done a great job. This is an exciting team, and this city is very excited about the game Sunday. Big game for the Saints. How were they able to finally turn the corner? Just Jim Moore, Jim Finks, the combination right there. They they play hard, got, got some talent, but they're not just the best talent in the league. They just play hard, great defense, keep the ball, and a great kicker. Okay, Archie, great to see you. Happy New Year, and uh, I know Keith and Bob are expecting you upstairs, so you, enjoy the game. Thank you for joining us. Keith? Holding on the offense. It's declined. It'll be fourth down. So with the big sack here, the ball moved back outside the Auburn 29. They can afford to go ahead and uh, decline that penalty. So now it just doesn't seem fair for the Saints to be in the playoffs and Archie Manning not to be a part of them. Quality fellow, always has been, and always will be, doubt in my mind. Yep. Nestling now is in for a man-sized field goal try. This is a 46-yarder. Bill Cox to hold it. Syracuse going for the lead. Will it get there? No, just short. 
he really didn't get a solid blow on it. You huff and you puff, and you pray a little bit, and sometimes even that won't work. His longest of this year was 45, that was 46, and it was a yard short. extend special best wishes and a happy new year to a good old friend, the principal engineer of this extravaganza, the USF and G Sugar Bowl, the executive director, Mickey Holmes. Momentary setback with a little health problem, but he's a good tough one, and I know that Mick will be back and back at his desk and doing his job. So Mickey, we wish you the very best for the coming year. Now Auburn's ball. First down. At their own 30, Berger gives it to the up man Ware. And in this series, you sort of get the feeling that Auburn might really want to test Ted Gregory. Well, they have gone up the middle a few times. Gregory has gotten the better part of it on occasion, but there have been other times when they've been able to run inside. Gregory on the left side, 93, double team to begin with. And the uh, Syracuse defensive line does a pretty nice job of stacking it up. I tell you that David Holmes is up there at cornerback. He looks like a linebacker, doesn't he? Yes, he does. He's in there thumping. Second down and nine. Burgers pass down the middle. Pass is caught by the tight end. That's Walter Reeves, a big target at 6'4, 245 from Eufaula, Alabama. The gate is short of the first down, however, out near the 37. They've got to go close to the 40 in order to get the first down. Reeves was voted by the coaches uh, on the all SEC team. In fact, Auburn had 11 players, six on offense and five on defense, to uh, be voted on the All-Southeastern Conference team. They are quite a bit of talent on this ball club. All right, Lawyer Tillman just trotted back on the field, and he's at the top of your picture. Big play man. Shoot it at him, and he can't hold it. He went down just past the marker and turned back, trying to get the first down play. And you've got an outstanding defensive play from Jeff Mangrum. And Jeff Mangrum is from Brunswick, Georgia. That's down South Georgia, not very far from Auburn. Tillman, 85, right in the center of your screen. Could have caught the football, but because Mangrum was there, heard the footsteps and couldn't hold on. And Schulman is in the punt. Tommy Kane is back. Punt is away. It's a high, long hanger. Forcing fair catch by Kane. Back around the Syracuse 16 yard line. So it's a 48 yarder by Schulman and no return with 8.42 to go in the first half. Well, from that angle, that perspective, it looks like a fur piece. And it is. Well, you're standing behind the center as a quarterback looking that way. It is a fur piece. Yeah, especially when you got those blue jerseys over there that are darn good to go through. From the 16, Don McPherson. Hands it, gets a big hole for Owen. And Owens gives him some breathing room. He's close to a first down. Carlo Cheatham, the junior out of Sheffield, Alabama. Number 35 gets in on the tackle. And Owens gets up Gimpy. They say he is the best pure talent that they have at running back. It was a prop proposition 48 youngster last year. He's a sophomore this year. Didn't play, obviously, because of the proposition 48. And this is the first uh, year that he's played. Chains on for the measurement while uh, the medical folks, the trainer, look at Owens. Looked like it was an ankle and they're just short of the first down. He's got nine yards plus on that carry. Syracuse offensive line, Keith, does a nice job. That time, Stoppel, their left tackle. Craig Stope with the junior and really the leader of that offensive line pulls from his left tackle spot. He is a man that seems to pull most of the time for them because he seems to be not only have the size but the foot speed and quickness to get around people. Well Michael trying to walk it off. 
and will go out of the game. He has to go out of the game for one play, but I expect he'll be out a little longer than that because that looks very tender. That's another one that got away from Joe and Mike in Pennsylvania. <laughs> I tell you, the Carrier Dome has really changed the face of, uh, of athletics at Syracuse University, hasn't it? Big, big crowds for basketball, full houses for football. Well, it's, it's comfortable. It's, it's not out in the weather when it gets cold, and I think it helps re recruit players, good players, to that program. Second down and uh, six inches or so. I don't know, maybe. Carrying it is Daryl Johnson. Johnson took a pretty good lick from Robert Goff and company, but he did get the first down. Dick McPherson has sort of changed the social habits with an 11 and 0 football team. It's been Jim Beheim's show with the, the kind of ball you bounce. Well, they say normally this, this time of year the football team has more losses than the basketball team, but that's not true nope. this year. Nope. the 27 first down yeah they give it right straight back to Drummond and Drummond runs for a first down to the 39 yard line where Alvin Briggs had to come over from cornerback and bring him down so we're talking about Stolpo at the watch the left tackle it's a Stolpo in the left guard as they pull this way and the runner will come by here and follow him Start off to the left side, hands it back. Stoffel inside, Flattery gets through there, and a nice game. Well-designed play. So the Orange pick up successive first downs, and they hand it up front to the big guy. Look at it. That time he got leverage. Darrell Johnson got his shoulder under the pads of the defender and rode him backwards. Kind of right, reminded me of Zonka, the way he's pushing those guys out of the way. Nice kick. Coach is McPherson, MAC. The quarterback is McPherson, MC. And it's second down again and inches. Let's see if they try to go for something bigger here. Or just pick up the first down. Oh, broken play, it looked like. McPherson, the quarterback. I'll tell you one thing, he is fearless. You see him put that head down and drive into that defensive back, Briggs? I'm not so sure that wasn't a design play. Uh, Might have been. As, as much as they like to, to let him run, the key, the tip off to it was the receiver on this side, the side he ended up coming to, was blocking the corner all the way. Briggs, Briggs gets number hurt four, here. Yeah. That's a pretty good lick McPherson put on him. Don is six footer, 190 pounder from West Hempstead, New York. He's now run the ball 11 times and no Syracuse back has carried it more than 14 times in a game this season. Briggs is out of there, and John Wiley in replacing him. McPherson looking to throw it, goes underneath with it, completes the pass to the Auburn 39. They've got to go close to the 34, so they're going to need about five more yards. Total plays so far in the ball game. Syracuse 33 and Auburn 17. So they've not only controlled the clock, and uh, with the 33 plays, or 16 more plays than Auburn. And you, saw, excuse me, Keith, you saw McPherson look to the sideline. He got a signal, and then he looked to the wristband that he has on his left arm. They signal in a number. He looks to his uh, wristband for the number that correlates to the play. They got Kelly. Remember, he's a very good receiver. Tied in. Threw it to him one time. The ball was batted down. The option the other way. And coming up, number 39, Kurt Crane, the senior from Birmingham, the inside backer. And you're right, Bob. Everywhere McPherson's going today, Kirk Crane's going with him. And I think that is the plan. As we take a look right there, that's Ivan uh, Fears, the receiver's coach, that is wagging the plays into McPherson. Now, we saw Briggs was hurt a little bit earlier. Wiley, number nine, a true freshman, is in at one corner for him. At the other corner is Reed, a redshirt freshman. So both Auburn's outstanding corners are out of the game. And it's third and short five. Pressure! No, they get it. That is the fourth sack, and 
And this one goes to Craig Ogletree, a sophomore from Barnesville, Georgia. Take a look right here. Ogletree is going to come in. Nobody's going to block him. The receiver's going to go out. Usually, if the receiver, is, the uh, back, is supposed to block him, the quarterback knows that it's a hot receiver, but that time there was a mix-up. Either McPherson or that the back did not block the proper man. Cooper Gardner in to punt it. Duke Donaldson back for Auburn. A little pressure on him, but it's a very high kick, and it should be very efficient. And uh, Donaldson didn't have any choice. He had to let the ball bounce and just simply couldn't get to it. And it winds up a 40-yard kick dead at the Auburn four. Go back and take a look. Craig Ogletree, who just had the sack, almost makes two big plays in a row. Just barely misses the, the uh, punt. Would have been a big play, two in a row for that young man. Final score, Nebraska, Florida State, Seminoles win 31-28. That was quite a, quite a scuffle in Tempe. Out of the end zone, Danley with the ball for the Auburn Tigers. And he'll pick up about five yards out near the nine where David Bavaro knocks him down. Yep, that's his younger brother of Mark of the Giants, formerly Notre Dame. Here's what's happened so far in the ball game. In the first quarter, the Auburn Tigers got out on top when Lawyer Tobin caught a 17-yard pass from Jeff Berger. Syracuse, early in the second quarter, responded with a long drive and stuck at the end zone on a 12-yard shot from McPherson to Glover, and we're all even at 7-7. Messling missed a 46-yard field goal just short for Syracuse. Now the Orange men have all been backed up on Auburn's end of the field. Second down and a long five. And a defensive play like that by Syracuse is making things tough for the Tigers. I, 52, I think, was the man that slipped in there, Derek Ward. David Favaro was also there. And so was Gregory, the nose guard. Texas A&M romping Notre Dame in the Cotton Bowl. That might go down as one of the big surprises of the postseason. That's a little bit of a surprise to me. Foot speed, uh, Bob. Foot that, speed. Boy, oh, those Aggies can run. That's for sure. That's one thing I've learned this year, Keith, in going around doing college football. Seems to be a lot of speed in some conferences, not so much in others. Right. Harry Mose comes onto the field. Three minutes and 50 seconds to go in the half. You got a timeout in a 7 7 ball game. Auburn made its second appearance of the Sugar Bowl 1984 against the Michigan Wolverines. Bo Jackson was the MVP, but place kicker L. Del Greco won it for the Tigers. Three field goals, the last one coming with just 23 seconds to play, 9-7. Auburn finished 11-1, third in the nation. All right, full house, crowd 75,495. For the 54th playing of the Sugar Bowl, now the USF&G Sugar Bowl, and it is third and nine for Auburn at their five-yard line. Danley and Ware in the backfield. And Berger's gonna throw it out of the end zone, gonna swing it out, set up the screen, and first down, Danley, out to the 17. Took a little gizzard to call that play when he got to work it out of your end zone, but it worked. And it's a good call, Keith. It's really a safe call because Berger, a senior quarterback, if he's not there, he's not going to throw it out there. It's like a long handoff. You stretch the defense, you swing the man out, get him the football, and you get a first down. You don't have to punt the ball away. Three minutes and 35 seconds to go in the first half. Berger stays in the air. Down the middle, got Warrior Tillman. And Tillman is out to the 36, and he'll have a first down. David Holmes brought him down. You can never take your eye off Tillman. Tillman is the one that's going to make the big play on you. Play action fake on first down after you've come out of your own end zone. Good call. And a nice throw. He had to throw it over a linebacker in between some orange helmets. 
Class throw right there. Back in 86, when the lawyer ran that reverse into the end zone, nobody was really sure. Half the players didn't know what the play was. He got the ball and said, well, here I go. Yeah, I'm going. Winning touchdown. That's a deep sideline pattern to Freddie Wagan. Penalty flag. That's a foul on the Syracuse defender who got there much too late. Ingram. Chris not looking at the markers. He was going for the man, and he hit him too late. Again, Auburn going away from the run, throwing the football. This is a long out pattern. Nice catch by Wagan and a frustration right there, just hitting him in the back. And we have a dead ball. Yards. Personal foul on the defense. It'll be first down. Back on a big 15 yards, and you've got the ball now inside the Syracuse 39. Don't ever forget, these are 17, 18, 19 year old young people. That's for sure. First down. Burger back. Got some heat. Takes off. Old Jeff's got the speed of a good 75 pickup, <laughs> but he turned in a pretty good play right there. Uh, well, he's not the quickest or the swiftest, but he's smart. He's got a good arm. He says, hey, it's getting a little hot in the pocket. Let me get out of here. And he's got the sense to get down when the party's over and the run is finished. And it's second down and two. That should be very close to a first down as they just wedge the ball on down the field. Danley and Ware. Ware's a good blocker. Reggie hangs in there and puts a hat on you. We'll have both fans for you at halftime. Mike Adam Lee will have a feature piece for you looking at New Year's in New Orleans and all the ancillary activities that go on, including the National Black Football Championship. Going to bring the chains out. Make sure on the first down. Your time remaining first half, two minutes and 25 seconds. They got the first down. Coach Ben Schwartzwalder, watching the game, 78, plays golf every day, living down in Florida now. 25 years, he produced 20 All-Americans at Syracuse University. And their Life first national match. championship. Yep. Boy, you talk about some running backs during his time. Oh, some All-Americans. You know who some of those All-Americans were? How about Ernie Davis, Jim Nance, Jim Brown, Gerhard Schwedis, who's here? Larry Zonka, Floyd Little. How about Roger Davis, and Bob Yates, and Fred Martino? Some good ones. Bootleg, Berger, Reeves, picks up. Now, let's see. Did he call that catch good, or did he call him out of bounds? It's good. Yeah. And it's the first down. It's a first down. That's a cute little play. Looked like a naked bootleg developing. It was. Reeves is here. He's going to release inside and then come back out. Everybody's going this way. He's going to fake it and hit him on a nice little play. Sometimes these things are good to get the linebackers all messed up because every, all the flow goes one way. They can't read and react as quickly if you run this type of play. Ball is just inside the Syracuse 18, where it's first down, Auburn. Now Auburn bidding for the lead. Get the ball to Canley, runs hard, and pick up a yard, maybe, maybe two. Brought down by Terry Wooden, number 90, a sophomore from Hartford, Connecticut. Stacy Danley is a freshman, 205 pounds. Behind him, Harry Mose, freshman, 200 pounds. And then you got James Joseph injured on the sideline. He'll be back next year. So they'll be very, very deep running back next year. Vincent Harris and Alex Strong back up to senior Ware at fullback. Both sophomores. Berger swings it out. Danley's in trouble. Got a problem with number 94, Paul Frey. Well, Paul sliding out there. Got his hands on him and wasn't about to turn him loose. To show you some of the wide receivers for the University of Auburn going downfield and blocking. Watch these two receivers as they'll come in and get these blocks on these on these linebackers now this is something different from pro ball who's those of you who watch you can block downfield before the ball is caught as long as it's 
behind the line of scrimmage. That time, blocking wasn't good enough. Auburn took the timeout to stop the clock at 58 seconds. There's a the time remaining. There's your score. Auburn owns the football. And off that last little swing pass. And a good play by Fraze. Auburn now is sitting back outside the 25. The 11th play in this possession by Auburn. It started back on the Tigers' five. Jeff Berger, during the timeout, has had the visit with Pat Sullivan and Pat Dye. And now the I said the 27. The ball actually is at the 23. There's your final Texas A&M. Big win for Jackie Sherrill and the Aggies. 35 to 10 over the Fighting Irish. Right here, it's a 7-7. It's third down and about 17. And back goes Jeff Berger to throw it. Gets it off toward the corner, and it is incomplete. The defender was Marcus Paul. The uh, target was Duke Donaldson. They got tangled up, Paul arguing that he was interfered with. Donaldson, 29. I think you're going to see Ingram. Remember, uh, Ingram was there. The defensive back is really going to be closer. Paul sees the ball all the way. When the ball's in the air, he has as much right as anybody. And if anything, it was offensive interference yep. because of Donaldson tripping Paul. Now, Win Lyle, 5'9", 175 pounder, is in to try to give the Auburn Tigers the halftime lead. You've got 52 seconds to go in the half. This is a 40-yard field goal try. He has a good leg. He drilled it. No flag. Five seconds used up on the clock, and Auburn goes to the lead, 10-7. Sports the return of ABC's Professional Bowlers Tour $125,000 ARC Alameda Open for Shrinkle. Chris has done this uh, series from its very beginning. Shouldn't be the same without Shrink. Oberton. And out of Alameda, California, then followed by the Harlem Globetrotters from Berlin on the premiere of ABC's Wide World of Sports tomorrow. Time you see there. You know, that's nice one man. of the longest running, most successful sports series in the history of television. I was television. just going to say, a nice man, Chris Schenkel. He's um, certainly an all-pro in my book. Eddie Elias, that much started that long time ago. Harry Golden, still going. Byron Abraham, along with Chris Ingram, deep now for Syracuse. And the kickoff by Chris Johnson, taken by Ingram. Auburn takes him down around the 23-yard line. And the clock now stops at 43 seconds to play in the first half, and we'll pause five seconds so that our stations can tell you who they are. Channel 7, Detroit. Auburn took the lead, 7-0. Syracuse came back to tie, 7-7. And now Auburn back to the lead, 10-7, on Glenn Lyle's 40-yard field goal. McPherson will try to work it downfield and maybe give Vesseling a shot. Carlo Cheatham plays deep center field for the Auburn defense. That's an incomplete forward pass. Incomplete forward pass. Definitely arm was going forward as Benji Rowland hit Don McPherson. Rowland's going to come from the right side of your screen. Number 96, he goes around the offensive tackle. Stoffel just hits him, hit him a little bit sooner. It would have been a big turnover for Auburn. Carlo Cheatham is playing about 30 yards deep <laughs> center field for the Auburn defense. Yeah. Way to play it. Second down and 10. Run a little draw. Gives the ball to Darrell Johnson. He gets a couple of yards on it, maybe. 
And that'll roll the clock now. And let's see if Syracuse wants to stop it with a timeout or let it expire and go to the clubhouse. I think that's it. So the first half is over. The 54th USF&G Sugar Bowl with the Auburn Tigers leading the Syracuse Orange men 10 to 7. Well, the option set this up and told the strong safety staples up and allowed Glover to get in behind. Syracuse had a field goal try for the lead just short, but when Lyle from 40 yards made his, and it's 10-7 at halftime. Boy, he really puts a leg swing on it, doesn't he? Here are the numbers now for the two teams at halftime. Interesting thing here for me, Keith, is the total yardage, first of all, 160 for Auburn. But look just above that, 126 of that is passing, and only 34 is rushing. On the other side, McPherson is having his problems. Only eight, only 53 yards passing for the nation's leading passer. Take a look at Syracuse possessions. The first three were punts. A couple of those were quick kicks. They finally got a touchdown on their fourth possession and missed a field goal, but no turnovers. Auburn scored on their second possession with only three plays through an interception and then got a field goal on their last possession. Individually, Berger had a good drive that last with completing five of six passes. Danley's the leading rusher, and Tillman has caught three for a touchdown. Syracuse, there you see McPherson, four of eight. What you don't see there are the four sacks that he has suffered. Johnston and uh, McPherson leading rushers. McPherson run the ball 13 times. Glover with a touchdown. Now the Crane. defensive stats, Excuse Bob, me. you yeah. don't see Andre Brussel's name. He has not been very obvious. Well, he has not. He's only made three tackles. Those three men, Crane and Phillips, play the same position. And the other one, Ed, uh, 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 Crane and... Uh, no, Crane and Riggins. Wiggins, yeah. Play the same position. And, uh, of course, Phillips is the other line, inside linebacker. So all the uh, tackles, most of the tackles, leading tackles, have been inside linebackers uh, for Auburn. And as we told you, we came on the air today from the Sugar Bowl that it was uh, orange time in Yolens. Since both teams, of course, Syracuse is all orange, and uh, Auburn is burnt orange and navy blue. So that is the predominant color. Of course, this town is just jumping up and down over what the Saints have done. Jim Mora, Jim Finks organization. Kind of interesting that uh, where Jim Finks has been, his general manager, he uh, came out of the, well, he took Bud Grant out of the CFL, brought him to Minnesota, built the foundation of the current Chicago Bears, uh, doing the same thing in New Orleans. And here we go with the second half. Syracuse kicks off. It goes to Perry Reed. And Reed, looking for daylight, will get up just over the 20 to about the 22. So the Tigers will have the ball first as we start the second half. Auburn leading by three. It's been a cracking good ball game so far. It's been a defensive struggle, Keith. The offenses have done some things in spots but mainly the two quarterbacks that we uh, highlighted at the beginning, Berger, the SEC Player of the Year, 68 yards and a touchdown, and McPherson have been pretty much held under control. From the 22, Berger, the quarterback, and he pitches the ball, goes to Reggie Ware. And penalty flag, he's down at the 25-yard line. Reggie Ware, 235-pound senior from Huntsville, it's holding against Auburn. So the Tigers come out and make a mistake. The officials today, Big 8, John McClinic, the referee. Take a look at the nose tackle. It's not Gregory, but Greer, 92. We don't know if uh, there was a problem with Gregory at halftime, if his knee stiffened up or whatever. 
We'll find out. Maybe Greer just wants to get in there and get a little action. But number 92, the backup Greer, weighs 290, six foot 290. So there's not much of a break for the center uh, Hudson when Gregory is out. Holding call backs him up 10. Ball comes back to the 12 yard line where it's first and 20. Syracuse shows a five man front, send on the three. Jeff Berger's pass to the sideline. Roya Tillman. It's a good catch just beyond the 25. He laid it out. Oh, Link. Now they're going to wave it off and say no. One official coming up indicated, uh, at least I thought he did, that it was a good catch. But let's got, see. Got a good look at it right here. You just can't see from that angle whether or not he had possession. Well, did the top end of him hit the ground before the bottom end? I think <laughs> that's the question. Well, let's see. He's going to land in bounds. That's a catch. Yeah, I think they missed that one. I think they missed that one. Second down, 20. Underneath, Ware has to come back low to get the ball, and Reggie has to fall down and effectively making the catch. So there's well, maybe a yard pickup on the play. It'll be third down. And I'm just sitting here, you know, Bob, I think this is either my 14th or 15th, I really can't remember, consecutive Sugar Bowl. But I've been watching uh, Auburn football a long time, Pat Dye's teams a long time, and this is totally out of character, what I'm seeing here. Well, I'll bet. Being thrown inside the I'll bet. I'll bet. I wonder why you had that big smile on your face when you walked into the booth and you saw Auburn out there. Down the middle it goes, and not quite. Dan Lake hooking right in the center. He is hauled down by David Bavaro, short of the first down, and Auburn now is going to have to punt it away. David, six-footer, 225, only a sophomore, and as we told you earlier, the younger brother of Mark Bavaro. All-American at Notre Dame and now with the Giants. Tommy Kane is deep for Syracuse. Tommy standing back inside his own 35. Got a little pressure on Schulman this time, but oh, that's a good kick. Nice, soft, tight spiral. Hangs up there a long time, and the Tigers effectively cover it. Now about the 37-yard line for Syracuse, and here's Mike. Well, Keith and Bob, if Syracuse is to win this game on a defensive standpoint, they'll have to do it without uh, their great nose guard, Ted Gregory. He is out for the rest of the game. As he strained that right knee again, and they don't want to, and they don't want to re-injure it. So he is out for the rest of the game, and we'll have more from the 54th annual Sugar Bowl. Auburn 10, Syracuse 7. Stay with us. Another of Syracuse Hall of Fame running backs, Floyd Little, three-time, three-time All-American, 1964, 65, 66. Later, All-Pro with the Denver Broncos. Little helped the Orange to two bowl games in his three years, the Sugar in 1964 and the Gator in 1966. That's big Ted Gregory. You just heard the report from Mike Adamley. He's strained uh, that knee that he had injured. He will not play again today. They'll surely miss him. And uh, Chris Ingram, quarterback for Auburn. Chris is out with a separated uh, shoulder. Uh, excuse me, Syracuse. Chris Ingram, Syracuse. Yeah. And so they're, they're two big losses right there. And Auburn's the corners are out. Auburn's corners are out too. Yeah, they're both gone yeah. too. All right, the Orange go to work. First down from their 37-yard line, and carrying the ball is Robert Drummond, and he works his way up in the middle and picks up about three, close to four. We're in the third quarter of play with Auburn leading in the ball game by 10 to seven, and the Rose Bowl getting underway with the Trojans out to a three-nothing lead in the first period in that one. Ball is at the 41 now for Syracuse. There have been four big sacks of Don McPherson by the Auburn defense, and each one of those sacks have weighed heavily in the fortunes of Syracuse. That's a little play action fake. Syracuse rolls and throws as Glover makes the catch. So Glover has been McPherson's prime target today. Though so over the season, Tommy Kane was their big receiver. Well, they're starting to throw the football a little bit. Take a look right here at Wiley. Now, Wiley is subbing for the injured Alvin Briggs. Briggs was hurt 
late in the first half. We, our report is that he has a sore shoulder. We don't know if he'll be back, but with Briggs being out and the other corner, Kevin Porter being suspended for this game, not suspended, he's uh, ruled ineligible because of an agent. Both corners are out for Auburn. Option play coming down the line, carrying the ball. Drummond, he's turned upside down about the 38-yard line of Auburn. First down for the Syracuse Orange, just short of the Tiger 43-yard line. Now Syracuse manifesting something of a threat here early in the third quarter, trying to regain the lead. There's Coach Mack. And you got to believe that uh, he's already won the Walter Camp Coach of the Year award, but you got to believe when when the rest of them come out that he's going to be a prime candidate for Coach of the Year honors. Pat Tye just named the SEC Coach of the Year. Had the ball inside to Darrell Johnson, trying for the first down, and the big fullback held the yard short. And, of course, Jim Mora was named the NFL Coach of the Year yesterday. The Saints had been by the uh, Associated Press. That's the offensive line for Syracuse. That's Stoffel, 76, charging in. Flannery, 53. Tough yardage. Johnston, the fullback, has to get that tough yardage to hold the linebackers so the option can pick up big yardage on the outside. Johnston has to do the dirty work. Third down and a full yard. Drummond dives and will have it by a yard. So he picked up a couple and he needed one. Train, we mentioned that he was a walk-on. He's had five interceptions. He leads the team in interceptions, ran one back for a touchdown. He also leads the team in tackles. And he has been shadowing Don McPherson on that option all day long. First down, Syracuse. Auburn, 32. Inside, yard maybe. Johnson, the big fullback. And he got picked up that time by Nate Hill. Nate, he's got to uh, play well with the, uh, we talked a little bit earlier about the loss of Tracy Rucker. All-American defensive end who is out for the year with knee surgery. Kevin Porter, another All-American on that Auburn defense. A corner is out. And now they've lost the other corner. So injuries starting them out for the Auburn defense. Second down and nine for Syracuse. Matt Person keeps it on the option. Penalty flag goes down and Robert Goff has got him. But the flag was dropped by a linesman across the way and it could be that somebody got there a little too soon. Might have been Robert Goff. Was. So they lose the big defensive play. Well, here's golf right here, Keith. The center's going to block this way, and he's just going to run around. It doesn't appear that he jumps too soon. Maybe he's lined up offside. I think he is. You see, the left guard tries to block him on a cutoff block, and he just has none of that. But I believe he was offside. Yeah, they were almost touching helmet. Yeah. You got to give them the length of the ball for that neutral zone. Looked like their tight helmets were almost touching. Second down and five now after the penalty for the Orange men. That's Glover in motion. That puts him on the same side with Kane. That Pearson stands up, goes inside. And it's an incomplete pass. Number 45 for Auburn. Greg Staples hit him so hard that Greg lost his hat. I mean, that's a calling card right there on a wide receiver. Well, the problem is the whole thing goes this way. Staples sees it the entire way. And the, there's a headhunter right there. Staples, the other safety, cheat them both. Hard hitters and safety. They completed this pass earlier in the game, Keith, as you'll remember. A little option, and then I drew it on the telestrator. This time, Staples saw it coming the entire way and made Glover pay the price. So it is third down and five. And he's got the first down. 
So they got good blocking behind the center. John Garrett, John Flannery, and Stoffel, who's Stoffel is really a good looking offensive back. Take a look at the blocking up front. There was a mistake here. It was Auburn's linebackers expecting pass on a third and five situation. We're lined up a little too deeply. You know, McPherson, I'm told by uh, Coach McPherson, does a lot of checking at the line of scrimmage, Keith, and it wouldn't be surprised for me to know at all that he checked that draw play when he saw the linebackers that deep. And so Syracuse sits with a first down at the Auburn 22, trailing by three, 10 to seven. And they're grinding in the middle. And they're doing with some success, though this time there's a half a yard or so. Johnson, the big fullback. There's Ivan Fears. I hate to make my living trying to run up the middle against Auburn, though. Well, I thought you say you hate to make your living giving signals, <laughs> grabbing your belt. Well, yeah. I rubbing would. your beard. <laughs> I would. Either one is right. Yeah. Somebody's got to do it to set up the option. Well, they stay with the ground game. Get good blocking up front. And Drummond is down to about the 11 yard line and looks like he's very close to a first down before Crane and Wiley get him by the shirt tail. Give credit to the offensive line right here on the left side. Crane, I mean, Nestopo and Flannery both will come and pull to the inside. They ran this play once before and it, and it worked very well. Gonna keep running it till they till they stop it. And no burners coming out of the backfield for Syracuse, but they're all tough. Johnson's 32 yards, Drummond 42 yards, chains on for the measurement. McPherson 26 yards, and Owens for 12. Owens uh, hurt an ankle earlier; it hasn't come back since. Here's your measurement. Got it. First down, Syracuse Auburn 11-yard line, and so the Tiger defensive folks now being tested. Well, you may have noticed on the football there when they marked it that they, uh, they were stenciled Syracuse University. Now, that, uh, that simply tells you that each team can use the football of their choice, and when Syracuse has the football, they use their brand of football, and when Auburn's out there, they may use a different brand. And being a quarterback, they're made a little bit differently, and the quarterbacks like to have their own football. On first down from the 11, McPherson turns looks and there ain't no help on that corner for him he'll pick up a yard as he falls forward turn right back into Alvin Mitchell a junior from Venice Florida for the Tigers that's Billy Maxwell there with a headset on right between coach fears on the right and coach uh, McPherson on the left Maxwell is the quarterback coach I wonder if Ivan rolls around a lot in bed. Doesn't doing that all day. <laughs> Shaking Shoot. and pulling and scratching. And, uh... <laughs> Second down nine. Look out for Kelly here. The tight end he hasn't caught a ball all day. They give it to Drummond. Well, they're going to make Auburn stop the running game, and right now Auburn's not doing it. And Drummond goes down to the four. Well, this is just smart coaching, Keith, and it starts at the top with uh, Coach McPherson, but it filters down through your coaches. Je George DeLeon, the offensive coordinator, realizes that Auburn now has been able to stop the option and take away some of their big plays. He is running primarily inside, and that's where he's picking up a lot of the yardage. 6.20 to go, third quarter. Syracuse bidding for the lead. Auburn 10-7 right now. be a big one as far as what color shirt old Moe's going to put on. They stay with the ground game. And Drummond is brought down by Clinton Riggins short of the goal line. He's down around the two. Remember, they can get a first down without scoring. That's going to be a first and goal looks like from a yard or what do we got? Flag. Flag. Yeah, yeah. I don't see the flag, but they're either. talking like there's one. And there is. That's a dead ball. Delay a game. Too much time on the offense. Uh -oh. 
That's a cardinal sin to let that 25 second clock run down, but it oftentimes happens when those plays are wig wagged into the sideline. Well, it usually starts here because they take too long in getting the play in. And when you wig wag them, it's usually a little bit quicker than running them in, but if you take too long to decide on the sideline which play you want, it doesn't matter what system you use in calling the plays. Now it is third and eight. going to run a slant to the inside right there at the bottom left of your screen now you see the trajectory of the ball has been uh, changed oh, what a great shot that is I, no I gotta say that touched the ground that ball hit the ground and he caught it off the ground 27 yard field goal try for Tim Vesley three out of four from this distance this season Bill Cox puts it down and then knocks it through and we're tied again so with five minutes and 34 seconds to go in the third quarter, it's 10-10. Was it a touchdown? Bob doesn't think so. Great shot to look at, whatever. No. I don't think so. His hand split. Great shot, though. It was close, but it's a tie ball game. Syracuse had an impressive drive going down to get the three points to tie. They had 13 plays, but Bob Greasy, their own mistake of letting time run out after having the ball seven minutes and 35 seconds, they get dinged by letting the 25-second clock expire and probably cost them a touchdown. Well, it's not as, as devastating because they did get three points out of it, but they did have a first down on about the three-yard line and instead had to settle for a field goal. So now Vesling will kick it off, and Harry Mose is the middleman to return it for the Auburn Tigers. Harry, number 25. High hanger, Mose up to the seven. Sideline to the 35. Brought down by Brian LeBaron. Tomorrow on ABC Sports, the Pro Bowlers Tour is back. $125,000 prize at the ARC Alameda Open. And the season premiere of ABC's Wide World of Sports, the Harlem Globetrotters from Berlin, West Germany. Three Eastern and Pacific, two Central. Tomorrow on ABC Sports. Give him the 36-yard line on the return. And let's check now who Auburn sends out there. Duke Donaldson, 29, is out. Scott Bolton, 24. They're the white people. Jeff Berger's gone all the way at quarterback. Danley and Vincent Harris is the fullback now. Berger, quick drop, little quick pop to the sidelines, and the pass is incomplete. He wanted to pop that man quickly, but there was a Syracuse defender right there. First quarter, Auburn to the lead, 7-0 on that uh, Berger to Tillman touchdown pass. Second quarter, it was McPherson to Glover to tie it at 7-7. Then Lyle gave Auburn the halftime lead on a 40-yard field goal, and Vesley now has tied it for Syracuse on a 27-yarder. And it's second down and 10 for Auburn. Berger hands it off, and Danley can't go anywhere. Real good defensive penetration that time by Syracuse. Syracuse defensively as we take a look at the mascot for the Auburn Tigers, War Eagle. Or the, uh, that's War Eagle. Tiger. That's, Tiger that's is, Tiger the, is the name of the War Eagle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a little confusing. <laughs> but the Tigers uh, are the, is the nickname and the War Eagle is the mascot. Auburn is one of eight today on third down conversions. They put Wagand and Lawyer Tillman into the ball game. Tillman's really in a, in a slot position. And Berger takes a deep drop. And throws to the wrong man. He threw the ball at Donaldson when, in fact, he had Tillman open. And 
couldn't see him because the linebacker was obscuring the vision, I'm sure, from where Jeff was. Uh, he had some problems back there. And uh, now he, Brian Schulman is in the punt. Not a bad day. 10-10 tie with 4.38 to go in the third quarter. And another good one from Schulman. He's getting better as the day goes on. Tommy Kane has to call it fair catch back at the 19-yard line. That's a 44-yarder, but good hang time on it. And Syracuse just finished one scoring drive, has the ball back. So Syracuse owns the ball. First down at their own 19-yard line with four and a half minutes to go in this third quarter. And now they wind the clock. And here they come. The last possession. They ran off 14 plays, grinding it in the main between the tackles. Michael Owens is back in at running back for Syracuse and has the ball and going down in the arms of number 97 for the Auburn Tigers. That's Malcolm McCurry, who's a big tackle. Here's Mike Adamley. Well, Keith, for Syracuse quarterback Don McPherson, football is a family affair. The entire McPherson entourage is here. Father Jean, Mother Margaret, sister-in-law, Debbie, uh, brother Miles, brother Mark is over here. Don, can Syracuse pull this off? Can they make, go 12-0 and and have that dream season? I think so. I think the defense has got to hold them, and I think we're going to come back and put some points on the board. Margaret, judge, judging by your expression, I know you're, you're in a lot of anguish today just watching young Donnie perform. <laughs> Speechless. Sorry, I'm sorry. I get very excited as game. Yes, I can't. I can't help it. I feel like I'm out there with him. <laughs> Miles, you make it to all the games? Uh, I made it to two this year. This is my third one. Okay. Living in San Diego is kind of far all right. away. Good to see you all. Happy New Year. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Keep Bob. Hey, hey. Thank you, Mike. Miles, who was in that shot there, was a defensive back for San Diego, uh, the Chargers for a few years, and his other brother. Mark is a world-ranked uh, middleweight boxer, so uh, a lot of athletes in this McPherson family. It's third down and three right now for the Orange. The ball at the 26-yard line, a rollout for McPherson. He's got room for his first down. And he takes it at the 30, rather than take the big hit, because Greg Staples really had him in his sights. And that is a new high for this season insofar as carries by any back. That's 15. For Don McPherson. Auburn is doing a good job of readjusting the offense of Syracuse. As you just mentioned, he has not run this many times this year. In the past two years, he's rushed a lot, but he's gotten the big plays this year and has not had to rush. This time, Syracuse is taking away his big man and Kane at the bottom left of your screen and forcing McPherson to run himself. From the 31, first down. Outside it comes to Owen. Uh-oh, you see that? He left the game earlier with a sore ankle, and right there, that ankle just gave way on him, and uh, he had no drive at all. He just kind of went down. Looks like his thigh yeah, maybe bothered like him. Too. His yeah. hamstring a little bit yeah. more than the, the ankle. Probably yeah. both. But we can just see the wrapping on the outside of the pant leg. You've got a little pull in that hamstring, or that ankle is sore. You're just not going to get any drive out of it. There's, There's the, the message yeah. board. Yeah. They don't have all the plays on there, just the long and wordy ones that you can't give all the signals for. And, uh, and talking with Coach McPherson, he says this is a very smart young man. He says he is really a quality, quality individual. Drummond is back. Owens is out. McPherson back to throw. Second down and 10. Has a man who slips and falls. Kelly. And that's the second time today they tried to get the ball to the tight end. And he lost his footing as he turned back to it. Pat caught something like 24, 25 balls this past season. Six so foot, today, he's yeah. Quiet. Just gonna say he's six six and two fifty. Came to Syracuse as a quarterback at, at two fifteen. Put on a little weight since those days. Edward Phillips coming out as linebacker for Auburn. Third and ten. A little pressure on McPherson. Can't get loose. Dropped at the 29. 
Andre Bruce and company. Nate Hill was the man who got there and got the man. Bruce forced the play right into the hill. So Syracuse will punt it away now with Cooper Gardner. Duke Donaldson waiting to return it. Auburn should come out of this with pretty good field position. If there's Duke handles Just going to say, if there's been one weakness for Syracuse this year, it's been their punting. That's a little better kick, but it's a tail dragger, and uh, that means it comes straight down instead of arching over, and it works out to be a 29-yard kick. So Auburn does have good field position up at their own 41. The unflappable Pat Sullivan. See Pat's eye. He yells and hollers and waves his arms, and <laughs> Pat just stands there and uh, that's the filter. <laughs> take a look. Take a look at the past and present quarterbacks. Pat Sullivan won the Heisman Trophy in 1971 with those numbers. Right below there is Jeff Berger's numbers this year. Every one of them. Well, not every one of them, but just about every one except for attempts is a little bit better. Sullivan won the Heisman Trophy. Berger wasn't even near. Tells you a little bit about how the football game has changed since 71. First down for Auburn. They'll go to the ground game. Give it to Danley. And Danley coming over the, off the left tackle. Finds a big gaping hole and runs for a first down. Marcus Hall brought him down. We're getting down into the time of the ball game now, Bob. We're, we're going to find out who's the physically strongest, who's wearing down. Well, that's why, that's why Auburn plays all these people as Marcus Paul, number 10, gets the tackle. Auburn has preached all week to us that the reason we play all these different people early in the game is so we can play strong in the fourth, fourth quarter. That's the longest rush of the game for Auburn. And they've got a first down on the Syracuse side. Dan Lee is tripped up, number 90. He reached up and got him with a shoe top. That's the second time today that Terry Wooden has made a one-handed tackle. Michigan State out to the 7-3 lead in the second quarter over USC. That stunt 4-3 defense of George Perlis, the Spartans. Tough to run against. That is tough. Rodney Pete is going to have to have a big day, the quarterback for SC, for them to win. Ball rest precisely on the Syracuse 47. With a second down and nine for Auburn. A 10-10 tie with 25 seconds to go in the third quarter and down the middle for the tight end Reeves. And it is incomplete. Knock loose for the linebacker, number 55, Dan Busey. out, Tillman in. Danley's out. That means Wakehand is in. So is Bolton. They got four wide outs. The big target is Tillman. And he's got it. And Lawyer goes to the 30. Gotta put a box and one on Tillman, little basketball. Jim Beheim ought to help him out. Here he is right here. Tillman is just gonna come down and break to the middle. The linebackers will drop back and he's just gonna wait till he clears the linebackers and defensive backs. Whitley gets inside the linebacker. A nice throw. Zone coverage might be not bad for a, somebody to shadow him a little bit. This is Danley picking his way through traffic. Tillman with four catches, 110 yards and a touchdown. And he's back out of the game. And the third quarter is about over. And it is over. We've got one to go, and we got a 10-10 time. The horns are blaring, the bugles are crying, and here we go to the final quarter of play in the 54th USF&G Sugar Bowl 10-10 between Syracuse and Auburn. And it right now is Auburn with the threat. The ball at the Syracuse, 26. Clear is second down and six. Wigand in motion. Up the middle, Reggie Ware, a yard. That'll do it The Syracuse, 25. Ted Gregory out of there. And picking up the pieces in the middle and playing up a storm is Alan Greer. A senior from Van Nuys, California. 
my neighborhood. What's he doing in Syracuse, New York? <laughs> well, he's a junior college transfer. He came in and wanted to play, and he's gotten the opportunity the last few weeks with the injury to Gregory. It'll be third down and a little more than five now for Auburn. Burger back. Not a problem. Steps away from the heat. Gonna run it. Dives. He's short of the marker. Well, now, you're looking at a big field goal effort if Wynn Lyle gets the call on fourth down. You've got a 40-yarder, uh, Keith. That's one of the strengths of this Auburn team is that their kickers, both of them, are all Southeastern Conference selections. Ryan Schulman, the holder, is out. And Wynn Lyle, 5'9", 175-pound sophomore from Auburn, will go for a 41-yarder to give the Tigers the lead early in the fourth quarter. And a flag down the freeway. 13-27 to go in the game. 13 to 10, over. One of the most surprising games in Sugar Bowl history played 1986. The Miami Hurricanes with quarterback Vinny Testaverde heavily favored. But the Tennessee Volunteers gave him a miserable day. UT quarterback Daryl Dickey wound up the MVP. And Tennessee walloped Miami 35 to 7. Here's the strong leg of Win Lyle. 41 yarder to give the Auburn Tigers the lead. Well, he got it up. Plenty of leg on it. And now another sophomore with a strong leg, Chris Johnson, is about to kick it off. Ryan Abraham and Robert Drummond are deep for the Orange men. take this moment to wish the best for a good old friend to travel the world with him. He's in for a bit of a fight right now, but he's tough as anybody. I want to wish the best to Alex Wallow. Alex, our boxing commentator. He, he'll whip your problem, pal. Don't worry about it. McPherson rolls out on first down and shoots one to the sidelines. A diving try by Rob Moore. But the freshman from Hempstead can't haul it in. So it'll be second down and ten. Michigan State now with its second touchdown. Lorenzo White scored them both. McPherson. Lorenzo with his two touchdowns so far in that ball game, Bob. Uh, 18 carries, 73 yards. Yeah. He had an outstanding season and uh, we had the pleasure to cover Michigan State a couple of times, and he was certainly was a huge factor in their success. That person's option pitches outside. Drummond gets a block. If he'd have stayed inside, I think he'd have had more yardage. But he chose to take it outside and still winds up close to a first down. I mean, a couple of times. I felt like I should have rented an apartment in East Lansing. <laughs> <laughs> I drove that road so many times in Detroit, I know every sign. We were there, I think, three times. Right? <laughs> we had an outstanding yeah. year. Yeah, really were. Big year for the Spartans. Ball is resting at the 34. They're a yard short of the first down. Third down coming up. Auburn leading 13 to 10 with 12 and a half minutes to play in the ball game. Drummond dives. Don't think he made it. Auburn got 
pretty good defensive penetration. And I think they may have nailed him down short. No, now they got the spot right on the line. Well, That's Benji a pretty Rowan. good spot. Well, Benji Rowan got good penetration. The nose man right here watches. He slants, and then two other linebackers will come from out of the picture to do a pretty good job of stuffing this play. Rowan kips his feet, gets into the backfield. Yeah, that's a good spot. He was there. He was there. Linesman right on top of the play, and it's first down. Syracuse at their 35. Into the middle goes Darrell Thompson. And there's a great big hump as he goes in there and collides. And the ball was loose there for a second, but I think they ruled he was down, Keith. You talk look. about painting helmets. This <laughs> is where it is, right here. That's where it's tough, as you saw right there. Get the number. Yeah, like there's Mitchell. the ball. Yeah, the ball was loose, but they probably ruled his uh, momentum was stopped, and, they, and the momentum stopped to blow the whistle. Coach Mack takes a sigh of relief over it. Second down and eight coming up right here. McPherson comes, drops back, gets his pass off down the middle, drilled it. And it's caught by Tommy Kane. Tommy Kane's first reception of the day, the leading receiver for Syracuse. And he had to go down on the rug to get it, but he came up with it. First reception, Keith, as you said. Here's Kane. He's going to run a square in. Watch the linebacker right here. When this option starts, he's going to be sucked up into the action, and it's his area where they throw right over it. Big first down for the Orange Man at the Auburn 44-yard line. Tigers lead 13 to 10. Syracuse undefeated, ranked fourth in the nation. Drummond pounding up the middle, breaking two tackles, and picks up a first down at the Auburn 33. Hey, we just want to fall back here for a second and just talk about the class of these two teams. It's been a fight back and forth as McPherson runs down to maybe give a little idea of the next play that he wants. He says he doesn't call the play, but he'll call the type of play. A sweep, maybe a screen, uh, something of that sort. There goes the big fullback, Johnson. And he pounds it down to the 21 of Auburn. And that's another first down. And what Mack probably said was stay inside. Keep running inside. The offensive line is blowing them off. 56 Garrett in the center gets his arm out there. Could have been a hold. But Johnston does a nice job of sliding to his right, finding where the crack is, and getting through it. I've always said the big uglies up front never get enough recognition. And right now, they're doing the job. Stoker, Flannery, Garrett, Bednar, Sim. And wiggling inside again. The short yardage is Johnson, the fullback. Ball is down at the Auburn 17. Well, they're grinding up four yards to the lick. It's a well-played game, and you really enjoyed watching it because both teams ranked in the top of the well. Auburn is ranked sixth, Syracuse fourth, and they played that way. They played up to their capabilities. Syracuse has, a, Syracuse has adjusted their offense to what Auburn has done to it. Here goes Drummond to the 15. Pick up a two. They turn the pages and saying, you got any good plays over there? Syracuse offensive front doing a heck of a job right now. They really are. John Nilsson, a freshman, number 66, is in that offensive front right now. Fresh legs. Third down, short three. Crowd in it. McPherson rolls out. Got a problem. Got a man wide open. Throws it. No. He had a man wide open, but he couldn't get it back and get it far enough to Pat Kelly. But when you're scrambling around, you've got lots of time. Now, 
Let me show you, the man that's going to be wide open is a tight end. He rolls out, and he tries to throw in this area, but the man that's going to be wide open is back to the top right of the screen. He rolls this way. All the defensive backs come this way. And look at the tight end at the top. He just can't get the ball back to him. Now it is a 32-yard field goal try by Tim Vessling to tie the game one more time. just drilled it and so for the third time we are even now we are faced with this only eight minutes and 53 seconds left to play in the ball game I've seen a lot of good football games over the years where games have gone down to the last nine seconds in this big old building and going all the way back to old Tulane Stadium this one has the look of being one of the better ones. It's a solid game, uh, Keith. I'm, I'm really impressed with the play of both teams, how they've responded. They've taken things away from the offense, and the offense has shifted a little bit and gone in another direction. It's really a good ball game. Syracuse after the field goal, the tie at 13-13. Wrestling -13. kicking off now. Harry Mose is the man in the middle to return it for Auburn. It's a high short kick. Mose takes it at the 12. He's got a hold. And good defensive play along the sidelines for Syracuse by Jim Gaughan, junior linebacker. Tomorrow on ABC Sports, Pro Bowlers Tour out of California, Alameda Open, ARC Alameda Open, $125,000. Chris Schenkel and Bobert. Then the season premiere of ABC's Wide World of Sports, the Harlem Globetrotters in Berlin with the Athlete of the Year Award. And it all starts at 3 Eastern and Pacific, 2 Central. Now let's see what Syracuse defense can do with the Auburn Tiger offense. They pretty well handled it since halftime. Back goes Jeff Berger. Drops it underneath to his tight end, Walter Reeves. And he's going to pick up about three yards on the play. Mike Adamly now. Keith, I just wanted to, before this game progressed any further, I wanted to show you one of the most beautiful creatures on the face of the earth, the Golden Eagle. This is War Eagle 6. Uh, Auburn's not their mascot, really. It's to kind of clear up some confusion. The Tigers is the nickname. War Eagles is the battle cry. Although this mascot's nickname or name is Tiger, so you figure it out. Just read Oliver Goldsmith. Ball comes up to the 35-yard line. Carried by Stacy Denley. And now Auburn's going to be looking at third down and a long four. Both teams in this ball game, as Bob said a while ago, it's been a well-played game. It's been only one turnover, and that was because of a, of a lack of communication between Bergen and wide receiver. There have been seven total penalties in the ball game. And yet they have played hard, both teams. Back goes Berger. Down he goes. Ball come loose. Auburn's covered it. Jeff trying to step up in the pocket. He stepped up into John Dominic. Big fifth-year senior from Rome, New York. And now Brian Schulman's in the punt. Well, here you take another look at it. Good coverage downfield. He had enough time to throw, then he changed his mind. And then it was too late. Lucky to get the ball back. Sixth punt of the day by Schulman. Oh, and not a very good one, but it's a low line drive, and Kane now has to watch the ball bounce, and it turns out to be a pretty good deal for Auburn as he rolls back to the 24-yard line. That is a 50-yard punt, and it was a low howitzer shot. say that part of the Cajun lore in this part of the country and that's normally applied to the Saints Lord of mercy are they up in the clouds over the success of the Saints this season they play Minnesota here at the dome on Sunday 
First down for Syracuse at their own 24. A 13-13 tie, 6-47 to play in the game, and Don McPherson throws it out and throws it and drills it and completes it to Glover, and he's got a first down at the 38-yard line. Here's where a guy like Don McPherson becomes double dangerous because he can do so many things. Well, he's, a, he's, he's been there before, too. He's a fifth-year senior. He's got a lot of poise. Don't forget that this year, the last two ball games of the year, they came from behind, and especially the last game, West Virginia, they had to win it in the last two minutes, score a touchdown and a two-point conversion to win it. So they've been here before. Drummond has had a big day. Goes to the 40, pick up a two yards. Glover's had a big day. Caught five passes for 77 yards. Both teams with three timeouts remaining, but time now becoming a precious commodity. For today, no running back for Syracuse had rushed the ball more than 14 times in the game this year. Now look what they've done here. Three of them have gone over 14. It tells you a little bit about the psychology and McPherson, the coach's offense. If something's not working, we'll go to something else that is. McPherson gets tangled up. That spoils the play. He has to pull it down and scramble. And he almost scrambled for a first down. He got a hole. He was in the arms of Robert Goff, but Robert just couldn't nail him down. They've taken the big play away, has Auburn forced him to do more rushing. Syracuse has been in the game. When I mean, you've got good people to run the football, McPherson almost drops it. They change their offensive style and go to what they have to go, go with to win the game. It's third and a short yard. Look at this. First time you've seen the wishbone all day, but it, the wishbone set doesn't really mean anything except it's a different look and McPherson sneaks for the first down. Well, it's wearing on, isn't it? Into the shank of the night. 5.07 to play in the ball game. It's been my pleasure this year to work with Bob Greasy. First time with Bob, Mike Adamley. I don't know how many know it, but these two gentlemen own silver footballs given by, to them by the Big Ten as the Big Ten Players of the Year. Bob in 66, Mike at Northwestern in 1970. It's been fun to be with you, gentlemen. My pleasure. Back goes McPherson. He shoots it high. Ball slipped out of his hands that time. He was looking to Drummond coming out of the backfield and also looking right into the eye of big Robert Goff, who was trying to dehorn him. My only concern is I'd go home and pull out some of those, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> There's Coach McPherson. You know, I asked him who had the biggest influence on him while he was, while he was going through coaching changes. He said he worked with Chuck Studley at the University of Cincinnati and says Studley taught him the X's and O's and Lou Saban, who he worked with at Denver, taught him how to handle people. On second and ten, deep drop by McPherson. Gets his pass off. It goes to the big fullback, Johnston. Johnston takes a lick from two Auburn men, bounces right up, and he is short of his first down. Ball is marked just inside the Auburn 44. Four minutes and 25 seconds to play in the game. 13-13 tie. There's never been a tie in the Sugar Bowl. And there's no uh, playoff. No overtime period. Auburn has one tie already this year. They tied Tennessee. Third and three. McPherson trying to get to the outside. Throws. Robert's got it. And he's got a first down. That's the Auburn 31. Or he waited till the last second. Well, the reason he had to wait, Keith, because there was good coverage. Now, when you roll, all the linebackers roll that way. Crane 39 at the top. But what happened, Glover, who ran it down and out, when he saw everybody, he went back to the inside. Watch him right here. We'll see him isolate. 45 goes out in front of him. He comes back to the inside. Smart move by uh, Glover. And it's first down, Orange Men at the Auburn 31-yard line. Big 
play by number 99, Nate Hill. Keith, the thing that's impressive about McPherson and the style of offense they run, they run an option, usually an option, you're going to fumble the ball a lot, put it on the ground. They don't do that. He doesn't throw interceptions, so they've had no turnovers today, and they had, didn't have many this year. Loss of three on the tackle by Hill. Second down, 13. Ball back up to 34. Sideline. Yes, he got it. Down at the 22. Auburn squawks over it. Perry Reed was right there, but Tommy Kane reeled it in. Simple out pattern. Reed 23 tries to make the interception. And a nice catch by Kane, who is oh, relatively another healthy. Another angle. Please. Quiet tonight. This afternoon. Question? Oh, he got it. Next case. Third and a yard. Looks like he's got it. They're now down in nestling range, even if the Auburn defense can stop them, and time remaining two and a half minutes. Both field goal kickers have hit two today. Wrestling just short for 46, good from 27, good from 32. Chains out to check the first down. Ooh, it's close, not quite. Now it's decision time, Coach Mack. He didn't waste much time. Take your points. Both of these teams have excellent field goal kickers, Keith. Bessling here, as you mentioned, is made two, and so this is a 38-yarder, and he's 11 out of 12 this year at this distance. The snapper is John Hudson. The holder, no, it's not John Hudson. The snapper is uh, Brian Featheroff. The kick is right down the middle. The snap by Featheroff, the hole by Phil Cox, and Bessling makes it pay off. And with two minutes and four seconds to play in the game, Syracuse to the lead by three. The Orange Men of Syracuse have taken the lead for the first time today, and it's come at a pretty good time with only two minutes and four seconds to play in the ball game. Now Vessling will kick it off. And Harry Bowes is the man in the middle. And there's a young fella right there waiting. Win Lyle, sophomore. I don't know, is it significant? He's got a patrolman standing alongside him. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't seem to be too upset or too no, nervous. No, he didn't, did he? has run off 39 plays in this half to only 16 for Auburn. Boy, Vesling got all of that one, didn't he? Back to the one goes Perry Reed. Stays in the traffic and up the lane to the 25-yard line. And tonight, laugh your way into 88 here on ABC. Three minutes of AB plus two on Full House. Followed by Amaris Dora, then Bob Euchre, man of the house. But Mr. Belvedere's really in charge you know that. and Brian Keith stars in pursuit of happiness followed by the award-winning 2020 all tonight on ABC well it is put up time or as they say down home gut check for the Auburn Tigers number six in the nation Syracuse number four in the nation and undefeated and Burgers pass down the middle is good to Donaldson and Duke gave up some ground 
He was trying to use his speed to get away, and he couldn't outrun David Bavaro. He had the ball up on the 30, but retreated it by a yard and a half, back inside the 29. Pick up on the play then will go for about three and a half. Berger again gets his pass away. Great catch by Lawyer Tilton. Is he a player? One big play after another for this big guy. That's the first down for Auburn. And 133 to play in the ball game. A twisting, turning, one-handed grab. He's an outstanding player, and Syracuse has not taken him out of the offense of Auburn today. Five catches for 118 yards for Lawyer Tillman, and Berger stays with the air game. Drops it off to Danley. Danley just puts his head down and takes off after a momentary hesitation to see where he, he had some room. And finally, Sean Whiteman ran him down. Both teams with all three timeouts. Only needing a field goal to tie. 109, clock ticking, Berger throwing, second down three. Don't want the sack here. Dump it off to Reggie Ware. And Reggie hits the chalk at about the 42. And there was nothing on that play, and so, in fact, he might have lost a half a yard or so. So it is third down now, and right at four yards. 102 to play in the game. Berger has hit six straight passes. He's been taking on these last three or four snaps, Bob. Short drops. Normally, a short drop means a quick pass. But the, they've been covered, and he's had to scramble out of there. Dumps it off to Donaldson. Duke picks up the first down at the Auburn 48-yard line. 57 seconds to go in the game, and timeout by Auburn. Oof, what a finish. Syracuse, 16. Auburn, 13. 50. Seven seconds to play. We're waiting to the last gasp here to pick the MVPs. That's probably pretty obvious for Syracuse, but not for Auburn. Each university will receive from Chevrolet, in the name of each player, the MVP, a $1,000 scholarship for the General Scholarship Fund to assist students in the pursuit of knowledge in their chosen field. Goes Berger on first down. Gets it down the middle. He's got Bolton. And Bolton is down to the Syracuse 35-yard line. 49 seconds to play in the game. Auburn has two timeouts remaining. It'll be officially the 34 because it is marked inside. The big strike. Box stops on the first down in place. 45 seconds. Berger goes knocked down. By number 94, Paul Frade, defensive lineman for the Orange Men. And that stops your clock at 41 seconds to go in the game. 16-13 Syracuse. Berger had eight straight completions before that pass was knocked down. As I told you, we'll name him here in a moment. Second and 10, just short of the Syracuse 34. Berger back. Throws it to Donaldson. Donaldson runs out of bounds right about the 34-yard line. And again, Duke trying to find some room to use his speed. He to just spurred his shoulders and punched straight ahead. He'd have picked up three or four yards probably. It is now third down. Say it's strange to see a Pat Dye coach team throwing the ball this much. It's a good thing he does have this passing game. He said a little bit earlier uh, in the week that he kind of enjoys the pass. He says, I even watch pro games now. I kind of enjoy the pass. <laughs> Third down, still about 10. Little swing thrown out to Danley. Danley runs away from one. Bangs helmets inside the 30 yard line. That is not a first down. 28 seconds to play. Marcus Paul and Jeff Mangrum denied him the real estate to run on the sideline. And here we are, all at the 30. It is fourth down. Now, when Lyle has kicked two out of three, 
from 50 or better, his longest 55 yards. And Jeff Berger calls time out. That means they've got one left. I think you've got to go for the three here, don't you? Well, it'd be what, a 47 yard field goal? He's long enough. Well, you got fourth down and almost five, fourth and five. You got 28 Actually, seconds. You have 28 seconds and one timeout. If you go for it and pick up the first down, Fine. the clock stops and you use it again. If you, but don't, if you don't, you lose. You lose. You've got, as I mentioned, uh, Lyle is an all SEC kicker. He's, he came into the game hitting 15 of 19, so he's 17 out of 22. Do you have more you confidence in Lyle go. or in Berger? You're gonna, they're going to go. They're going for the win. They're going for the win. They got one timeout remaining. Well, I'm sure Pat Dye is not interested in the tie. And in, a, in a bowl game that doesn't mean anything in the national uh, championship. Uh, well, let's series. see what they do, though. Let's see whether or not uh, Berger comes out here like he used to do and, and goes to a different cadence to try to pull him offside. But even offside won't give him the first down. Well, I think it might. This, uh, well, it depends. Almost be close. Yeah. Six yards. Well, he's going to put it up. He gets it away, and it's caught by Danley for the first down at the 22-yard line with 22 seconds to play. And they were all over him. He had to throw it over two Syracuse players. He looks downfield. This ball could have been picked off as easily as not. Just a great throw. First down from the 22. Berger back. Throws it to the sideline. Caught by Tillman. Out of bounds at the 15-yard line. 13 seconds to play. Marcus Paul took him out. Auburn has one timeout remaining. Berger's hit 12 of his last 13 passes. Thirteen ticks on the clock. Looking for Tillman. Underneath Donaldson, tripped up. He had one man back there with him, number 22, Sean Whiteman, and Whiteman got it. And Auburn now spends its last time out with four seconds to play. He got one more snap. And Look what we have here. Win Lyle. I don't disagree with it. Confound it. Both teams have played well. They've asserted that it's been a noble effort on both sides. Why not? What would it be? Third down? Yep. Third and be four. Third down and one, is that what it is? Third and one. You'd have to throw it into the end zone. Geez, if you if you you can always kick a field goal on fourth down. Why don't you go for it, throw it into the end zone, and take a shot at it? You lose if you don't make it. Here you don't. Oh, lose. you kick the field goal on fourth down. Third down. Third down and one. Go throw it once in the end zone. But All right, Win Lyle. Schulman the holder. Hudson the snapper. 30-yard try. Good. With one second to play in the game, it's a 16-16 tie, and it looks like it's going to be the first time in 54 years of the Sugar Bowl that we've had such a thing. And that yep. man right there has gone through a season. He was 11-0 coming in. He's done an outstanding job of getting his players ready to play. Discipline. The MVP for the Sugar Bowl, Bob, the Miller Digby Trophy, is uh, Don McPherson. I'll give you our Chevy players in just a moment. One second. Maybe a year's win Lyle now from 30 yards. He kicked it from 40, 41, and 30 and hit them all today.
But it was an outstanding effort by both teams. Oh, it was an outstanding game. You really got to credit Syracuse coming in. Came into this game undefeated. Not many people respecting what they did. And Auburn, Pat Hayden, slapping, congratulating Win Lyle. I mean, the Berger, that's Berger, for moving the team down the field. Now Chris Johnson will kick it off. Syracuse will handle the ball one more time, and that'll do it. Little Squibber just rolls it along. It's picked up by an up man. And now they're going to pitch it around a little bit. And they're still alive. And finally on the ground. And time has expired. And the football game is over. And it is a tie ball game. Syracuse 16 and Auburn 16. And the most valuable players, each university receiving $1,000 in the name of these players for their general scholarship fund from Chevrolet, Don McPherson. For Syracuse and Lawyer Tillman for Auburn with six catches, big catches, all of them at 124 yards. McPherson on the day, 11 of 21, 140 passing, but he was un the unquestioned leader of the Syracuse offense. And so it's done. 16-16. was a hanger right down to the very last second. It will go down probably as one of the best, most well-played Sugar Bowls in history. 16-16, the final coach, Dick McPherson. I imagine it's a little bit bittersweet. You wanted to go 12-0. You wanted to right. really claim, make a claim for the national championship. Exactly How do you feel? Right. You're exactly right. We wanted to go 12-0. Then we let everything happen from there. We didn't get there. We got a tie. I tell you, it's a, it's a long struggle, beautiful, beautiful place. We had a great time in New Orleans. The Sugar Bowl is fantastic. I want to thank all of the Sugar Bowl people for inviting us here, Mike. It was, it was just beautiful. And I, now I got to go into my kids and try to love them up a little bit because they really are a great bunch. I know they were disappointed. What did you think with four seconds ago? I know it's hard to put the co other coaches' shoes on. Right. Would you have gone for the tie? Would I have gone for the tie? Absolutely not. I would not have gone for the tie, but you are right. I'm not in his shoes. Coach, uh, again, it's hard, it's hard to tarnish a season like you guys had, and I don't think the 16, 16 tie does that. It's been Mike, a great season. Thank you, Mike. Okay. And Get uh, back to your players. Know, you're okay. a great competitor yourself. I remember okay. you well. God love you. Okay. God Thanks, love Mike. everybody. I appreciate it. Yep. Keith and Bob. All right, Mike. Well, what would you have done? Well, it was interesting. I, I, I think I would have gone for the win. It's, it's a meaningless uh, ball game. It's not for the national championship. Uh, you know, you play it wide open the whole way. You know, a tie is better than a loss, but uh, I think you got to go for it in that situation. And uh, McPherson, I, th I give him credit for saying what he thinks. Huh? Uh, some say it's a sister kisser, but after a game like this, you ought to be pretty. Well, I think Pat Dye was was more confident of, of, a, of a tie with his kicker. I just don't understand why he didn't go for one more play, throw the pass into the end zone. It was third down. If it's incomplete, you come back and kick the field goal if that's what he really wanted to do. Well, you had Tillman, too. I was a little surprised that maybe Tillman wasn't uh, a little more obvious uh, and, and, and late in the going there because he almost every time when they had to have a big play, it looked like Lawyer made it. Well, they did, but on the last few plays as I was watching, they were double covering Lawyer Tillman, and, and, yeah. and well, they should, and they finally got to doing that. Uh, but again, it's it was a heck of a ball game. I, you know, I, I'm very impressed with Syracuse and, and what uh, uh, Dick McPherson has done for that ball club. You know, he, the discipline, uh, the motivation that he has brought to that system and what he has done is just overwhelming. Yeah, it is. It is. Well, we've got some highlights. I'm not sure exactly what they are, so let's roll them here and we'll see what they are as we got down through the... We started out with Auburn going to the lead by 7-0 uh, on this 17-yard reception by Tillman from Berger, and here was just a great athletic play by Tillman and a perfect pass by Berger. Well, Berger puts it the only place he can, high and away from the two defensive backs. More often than not, a quarterback will throw the ball away from the defense as much to the offensive man, and that was the only place he could put it. Syracuse then responded and kept off their drive with this 12-yarder from McPherson to Glover. Again, the option down the line pulls up the men in, in the intermediate area and allows him to throw over the linebackers and between them and into the end zone. Nice catch by Glover. 
It was Win Lyle who stepped into being a principal figure in this ball game early on with this 40-yard uh, field goal to give Auburn a 10-7 halftime lead. That was the Syracuse uh, touchdown that tied it by Vessling at 10-10, I guess it was. And then as time wore on down in the ball game, and uh, that, that I don't understand, that's Vessling's field goal that gave Syracuse the 16-13 lead. And, uh, uh, yeah, there were field goals all over the place today. And here with a big play as uh, Danley caught the ball on a looped pass by Berger. And that was the only kind of a pass that Jeff could throw. Yeah, it was. And it was a critical play. Uh, fourth down. And it was the only place he could put it. And then with uh, four seconds left, that guy made the decision to go for the tie. And uh, when Lyle made it pay off as he drilled it from 30 yards. So he made three field goals today. As did Vestling. Vestling just missed one from 46 yards, and that's how we finished the first tie in uh, Sugar Bowl history at 16-16. And what this does, Syracuse came in 11-0, and they go out of this ball game still undefeated. So they finish 11-0 and one.